नमस्कार आदाब सत श्रीकाल कस का है केम छो हेलो एंड वेलकम इन गेट वाला तो स्टूडेंट दिस इज वन शॉर्ट सीरीज इन वन सीरीज सीरीज एज यू ऑलरेडी नो वी कंप्लीट वन इंटायर टॉपिक ऑफ एनी सब्जेक्ट इन वन लेक्चर लाइक आई एम डीलिंग मशीन डिजाइन सब्जेक्ट विथ यू एंड इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ वन शॉर्ट सीरीज इन मशीन डिजाइन सब्जेक्ट आई हैव कंप्लीटेड ब्रेक्स टॉपिक नाउ टूडे दिस इज द सेकेंड लेक्चर एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कंप्लीट क्लचेस means today the topic which we are going to cover in machine design subject in this one short series is clutches okay so before starting this is brief introduction about me as you already know my name is ramanand bansal yours rb sir i have cracked gate in 2014 with all india rank 70 in mechanical branch then i got selected in iocl hbcl and bark finally i have joined iocl as operation officer in hazira terminal surat after working for one year in iocl I left the job to pursue my passion towards teaching, and since then I am teaching in the field of gate and ESC. So this is brief introduction about me. So today the topic which we are we, we are going to complete is clutches, and in clutches in this topic this will be our lecture flow of today's class. First we will discuss introduction of clutch. In introduction of clutch we will discuss what is clutch, what is the definition of clutch, what is the basic purpose of clutch. after that we will discuss types of clutch various types of clutch what are what are positive clutch what are friction clutch that we will discuss in second second flow that is types of clutch after that i will discuss analysis of single plate clutch this part which is uh, going to start from topic number 3 this is very 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 important for gate examiners okay so third we will discuss in third topic we will discuss analysis of single plate clutch then analysis of multi plate clutch uh both are same analysis of multi plate clutch after completing analysis of multi plate clutch we will discuss analysis of cone clutch and after completing analysis of cone clutch uh, we will discuss analysis of centrifugal clutch so it is the lecture flow of today's class okay so first we will discuss introduction of clutch here we will discuss what is clutch or what is the basic purpose of clutch you already know uh, in automobile everybody has used a clutch while driving car or bikes okay what is clutch it is used to connect what is clutch it is used to connect one second need to change the color it is used to connect or disconnect it is very important it is used to connect or disconnect the source of power it is the source of power from the remaining part of power transmitting system it is the remaining part of power transmitting system at the will of operator okay in where when you are riding a car or bike when you are will you will press the clutch pedal so when you will press the clutch pedal automatically this system will disengage from this system okay like if i will press this this clutch pedal this system and this system will disengage it is the operation of clutch it is occurring through this arrangement which is known as clutch i will explain the base uh, how clutch works but here i am not explaining how clutch works here i am explaining what is the basic purpose of clutch how we are obtaining that basic purpose that is different thing that we will discuss later but when i will press this clutch pedal it is known as clutch pedal so this uh, this system that is we can say it is input system or it is source of power system will get disengaged from this system and we can say it is output shaft means can i say when i will press this clutch pedal input shaft will get disengaged from output shaft okay and when the, when we are not pressing in clutch pedal means in general case this input shaft will be engaged with this output shaft means can i say in this system at the will of operator or driver we can engage or disengage uh, input shaft or source of power from output shaft or other part of this power transmitting system okay it is the one of the most important basic purpose of clutch when you are no, we are no, you are pressing this clutch pedal this input and output will be will get disengaged otherwise it will be in engaged okay now everybody know this purpose of clutch but here one more important purpose of clutch is when they are in engaged position when they are disengaged no power or torque will transfer from input and output because input and output are disconnected yes sir but when they are engaged in engaged position at that time what we want power or torque transfer to transmit from input on output shaft yes sir because uh, when they are engaged engaged means we want that power or torque should transmit from input to output shaft so important point is when they are engaged at that time this clutch should be read the second point this clutch should be capable to transmit the required torque 
or power from input shaft to output shaft in engaged position because when it is disengaged no uh, no power or torque will transmit from input to output but when this is engaged at that time this clutch should be capable capable to transmit required torque from input to output okay so when we will study na design of clutch at that time we will we will keep two points in this in our mind first point is the design should be such that whenever we want to disengage input and output we should able to disengage the input and output sir okay by pressing this clutch pedal and second when the when the clutch is in engaged position means input and output shaft are engaged at that time the strength of the clutch should be such that it should be capable to transmit input and output shaft uh, so to transmit sorry uh, torque from input to output shaft. so these two points are very important and while designing the, the first part is very simple we need to make a mechanical system such that while we will when we will press this clutch pedal input and output should our shaft should do disengage this first part is very simple here main main uh, calculation will come in second part when clutch are in disengaged position sorry engaged position at that time the it should be capable when they are in engaged position it should be capable to transmit input uh, to, to transmit torque from required torque from input to output so these are the basic purpose of okay now to fulfill this purpose of clutch generally we use two type of clutch one is known as positive clutch positive clutch is also known as jaw clutch okay jaw clutch and second is friction clutch in gate syllabus when we, we we have to mainly deal with friction clutch now what is positive or jaw clutch uh, suppose this is input shaft and this is one clutch plate it is output shaft and in output shaft we have engaged or mounted this clutch plate this is clutch plate a and this is clutch plate b you can see in clutch plate a and clutch plate b we have made a teeth we have made various teeth means we have connected this clutch pad pad clutch pad a and b by using teeth and if we are connecting clutch pad a pad, uh, clutch plate a and clutch plate b by using teeth means there will be no chances of slip and while transmitting motion or power if there is no chances of slip that system is known as positive system means like here we are engaging this clutch by using the teeth and the, uh, engaging the uh, clutch by using teeth it means there will be no slip and if there is no slip means this clutch is positive clutch okay so jaw clutch is also known as positive clutch okay one of the biggest advantage of jaw clutch or positive clutch is there will be no chances of slip there will be no chances of slip means it is positive engagement i have written here means no chances of slip due to presence of teeth okay now uh, instead if we are not using positive clutch there is another clutch which is known as friction clutch friction clutch here what we will do here we have not made any teeth teeth to teeth like arrangement means here we will use friction to transmit the torque from input to output at engaged position and how we will transfer Uh, it is very easy uh, but we have to study this friction clutch in detail right now i am discussing this in brief manner suppose this is clutch pedal plate a suppose this is clutch plate a which is connected to input shaft this is clutch plate b which is connected to output shaft and right now we are discussing when they are in engaged position so what will happen so suppose this is clutch plate a which is connected to input shaft this is clutch plate b which is connected to output shaft and we have engaged both of the plate plate now what we will do we will engage both of the plate with some pressure like i am applying you can see imagine my i am applying a pressure between uh, a pressure between these two hand means these two clutch plate what will happen due to this pressure normal pressure will come in this sur surface due to normal surface normal force will come not due to normal pressure normal force will come and due to normal force friction force will come and due to friction force this um, torque or more power will transmit from input shaft to output shaft suppose input is rotating like this and we are rotating input by providing power but right now if they are disengaged output will not rotate but when we will connect in input and output with pressure so friction will press normal force will come due to which friction will come or due to friction when this input is rotating due to this rotation output will also rotate because what is the purpose of friction the purpose of friction is to reduce the motion no 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 the purpose of friction is reduce the relative motion relative motion and suppose this clutch plate a is already rotating due to this input power 
Now, when they are engaged, before engaging, this clutch plate B was not, or input shot was not rotating. Now, what friction will draw? To reduce the relative motion between them, either friction will reduce the speed of input shaft or friction will rotate the, this output shaft in the direction of input shaft. So, here second thing is occurring because uh, input shaft is already rotating due to the uh, supply of power. So, it will always rotate. Now, what friction will do? Friction will rotate output shaft or clutch plate B in the direction of input shaft or clutch plate A. So, what friction will do? When input is rotating like this, it will also rotate output like this. So, due to friction, this will rotate like this. This power or torque will transmit from input to output shaft. But here, to transmit the power or torque for input to output shaft, we are using the friction. That's why it is known as friction clutch. And whenever we are using a uh, friction to transmit the power or torque or motion, you already study in engineering mechanics also, theory of machine also, and here machine design. Uh, here discussing at this point in machine design also. Whenever we are using friction to transmit power from any two system or a torque or motion from any two system like input to output, in that case there will be chances of slip. Because whenever friction is present, there will always be chances of slip. There will always be chances of slip. Okay. So can I say here in this friction class there is chances of slip during engagement. Because there we are using friction to transmit the power from input to output side and if we are using the friction there will be chances of slip it is one of the uh, disadvantage of this friction clutch advantage of positive clutch is no chances of slip that's why that this clutch is known as positive clutch because here we are not using friction to transmit the power or torque from input to output but since here we are using friction there will be chances of slip now second point since in positive clutch since in positive clutch there is no chances of slip there is no chances of slip Means can I say, can I say in positive clutch, the torque transmitting capacity of positive clutch will be very high. So, yes sir. The one, one, next important point regarding positive clutch is the torque transmitting capacity of positive clutch is very high because there is no chances of slip. Means we can, uh, the torque transmitting capacity of positive clutch will be high. But regarding friction clutch, the torque transmitting capacity of friction clutch will depend upon the axial force which we are applying in this system why why because because uh, here we are using friction to transmit the clutch uh, power or torque from input to output so to uh, to generate friction force we need to apply sufficient pressure between them to apply sufficient pressure we need to apply axial force like this due to this axial force this uh, these plates are connected with pressurized condition and due to this pressure normal force is creating due to which friction force is creating this is due to which friction torque is coming co connect is creating and due to that friction torque power or torque is transferring from input to output shaft means can i say the torque transmitting capacity of this friction clutch will depend upon the axial force which we are applying here okay but axial force uh, because if there is less axial force there will be more chances of slip and if we don't want that there should be if we want there should be no slip For, to ensure that we need to apply sufficient axial force such that sufficient pressure will create between these surfaces now, so we can we say the torque transmitting capacity of this friction clutch will depend upon the axial force which we are applying here. But this, uh, but we cannot apply axial force uh, beyond any particular limit. Because what will happen if you will apply axial force beyond any particular limit, very high pressure will create uh, in these surfaces. And if this pressure is more than permissible pressure, this system will get failed. Because we cannot apply pressure or maximum pressure beyond permissible pressure of the system. Because if we will apply, if we will apply pressure beyond permissible pressure, the system will get failed. Means, can I say the torque transmitting capacity of friction plus is limited because it is depending upon the axial force applied in this system in engaged position, and we cannot apply axial force beyond any particular limit because if we will apply axial force beyond any particular limit, pressure will maximum pressure will go beyond permissible pressure, and system will get. That's why the torque transmitting capacity of this friction clutch is limited, which depend upon the axial force applied in the system. Summary is, torque transmitting capacity of this clutch is very high. As compared to this clutch, the torque transmitting capacity of friction clutch is less, which depends upon the axial force which we are applying in this system. So, this is also one of the advantage of positive clutch. But then why we are using friction clutch? We should always use positive clutch. No. There is one biggest disadvantage with positive clutch, which is advantage for 
advantageous for friction clutch. What is this? Now you can see the purpose of clutch is not only to transmit torque from input to output shaft. This is not only the purpose of clutch. The another purpose of clutch is when we are want, we want, we should, uh, it should be above uh, at the clutch pedal A and B should disengage. This input and output shaft should disengage whenever we have, we want. Similarly, we, uh, suppose I have disengaged the clutch. After some time, I need to engage the clutch. Means whenever we want, the clutch should engage or disengage, or input shaft, or, or input and output shaft should engage or disengage through this clutch. Now, what is the problem with this positive clutch? Here, teeth, teeth arrangement we have made. So, what will happen when, suppose these are disengaged. Now, when you will try to engage this clutch, there is chances of this teeth, there is chances that this teeth can break. Yes, sir. Okay. Especially when the speed or say of the system is very high. Yes, sir. If you are engaging or disengaging this clutch at very high side speed, there are chances that teeth of the clutch can break because there is sudden engagement or disengagement will occur. Okay. Okay. So one of the biggest disadvantage of positive clutch or jaw clutch is because the per one of the purpose of clutch is also engage or disengage the input and output shaft. And when these things will occur, that is engagement or disengage. But at that time, in positive clutch, sudden engagement or disengagement will occur. Due to which this chance, there is chances of breaking the teeth. Which it the teeth can break, and if teeth will break, this is clutch will fail. Okay, and there is high chances of this breaking of teeth when the speed of the system is very high. Which can I say in in jaw clutch or positive clutch sudden engagement occurs. That's why we cannot engage this jaw clutch or positive clutch at high speed to avoid jerk. Because what will happen? This teeth of the clutch plate can break. Okay, but this is the advantage for friction clutch. Why, sir? Sorry, this is the advantage of for friction clutch. Because here we have not made any teeth. Simple. You can see this is like this. Whenever we want to engage, disengage, it will disengage. Whenever we want to engage, this will engage. There is no teeth, means no chances of jerk, no chances of breaking of teeth. Because here engagement or disengagement are is smooth. So can I say in friction clutch? Engagement and disengagement are smooth. Means we can also engage the clutch at high speed. It means if I will ask in automobile which clutch I should use. If I will ask in automobile which clutch I should use, whether friction clutch or friction clutch or jaw clutch. So you can say friction clutch, jaw uh, friction clutch or jaw clutch. So you can say jaw clutch you cannot use in automobile because when we are we are riding the car in 80 km per hour. At that time, uh, we need, uh, also we need to disengage the clutch. We need to, we, we, if I want to change the gear, we need to press the clutch pedal before that. And if you are pressing the clutch pedal, input and output shaft will get disengaged. Miss atom at automobile we want. At, uh, at uh, in automobile we what we want. Uh, in low speed we can also engage or disengage the clutch. And at high speed also we want that we should able to engage or disengage the clutch. But positive clutch are capable to engage or uh, to do engagement or disengagement at low speed. But they are not capable to do engagement or disengagement of clutch at high speed. Means in automobile we will use friction clutch. Because the one of the other purpose of clutch is engagement or disengagement. And positive clutch we cannot engage or disengage at high speed. So simply at, uh, use uh, this friction clutch is generally used in auto. So where we use this friction clutch? We use this positive clutch in power press or rolling means in power press and rolling means generally what we will do we will engage the clutch at very low speed okay. at very low speed okay after that we will transfer uh, we will transfer the torque from input to output and here torque transmitting capacity is required is very high which is the advantage for positive but here we will not here we are not uh, doing any uh, I am not uh, I am not in race so I should I should ride bike. Uh, speed bi or bike should be more than any other system. Here, in power press and rolling miss, we operate the system at very low speed and we will engage or disengage the clutch at very low speed. But here, what we want, torque transmitting capacity should be very high, which is advantage for, which is advantageous point for positive clutch. So, in this system, we use positive clutch. Positive clutch. Here, we will do engagement and disengagement at low speed, but we will use this clutch to transmit very high torque. But friction clutch, 
in friction clutch uh, in we can do engagement or disengagement at any speed which we want in automobile that's why we will use friction clutch in so these are the types of clutch okay now if we will talk about positive clutch or jaw clutch this positive clutch is further classified as in two types you need not to go in detail it is a square jaw clutch and second part is a spiral jaw clutch this is the basic diagram of square jaw clutch only keep this image in your mind it is the basic diagram of a spiral jaw clutch and what another point you can remember this square jaw clutch can transmit torque in both direction means suppose uh, input shaft is rotating like this then also it can transmit to torque if input shaft is rotating like this then also this is square jaw clutch can transmit torque but uh, this spiral jaw clutch can transmit torque in only one direction means if its input shaft is rotating like this and it is transmitting the torque means in this rotation it cannot transmit torque means summary is whenever a, you know the direction of input shaft in that case you, you can use a spiral jaw clutch but but if any system the direction of input shaft is changing it can be like this also or it can be like this also then we will use okay okay beyond this you need not to study this topic of jaw classification of jaw okay because mainly what we have to study in these types of clutch is friction clutch this is very important because numerical will come from friction clutch so here i already only written the name of that various types of friction clutch because we will discuss this all types in detailed manner one by one so here i already written the various types of friction clutch which are plate clutch friction clutch is further classified as plate clutch what is plate clutch that we will discuss in detail manner this cone clutch and second third classification is centrifugal clutch plate clutch is further classified as single plate clutch and multi plate clutch so these are the classification of friction clutch we will study three types of friction clutch plate clutch cone clutch and centrifugal clutch plate clutch is further classified as single plate clutch and multi plate clutch. okay so these are the types of now we will start the discussion of friction clutch and in friction clutch uh, we have already discussed various types of friction clutch that are these are flat clutch cone clutch and centrifugal clutch so first we will discuss the plate clutch okay so in friction clutch we, first we are going to discuss plate clutch now in plate clutch plate clutches are further classified as single plate clutch or multi plate clutch so we will discuss single plate clutch and multi plate clutch one by one if you understand we will understood a single plate clutch then multi plate clutch will become very very easy for you so first we will discuss single plate clutch and single in single plate clutch also we will discuss two cases first case is when in single plate clutch one side is effective what is its meaning i will explain then i will discuss in single plate clutch when both side if is effective so first we are doing the analysis of single plate clutch when one side is effective now it is the diagram or symmetric diagram of single plate clutch when one side of the clutch is effective now you can see this diagram uh, here it is input shaft or driving shaft it is driven shaft or output shaft now this driven shaft is spline shaft spline shaft means this plate suppose i am referring this plate as plate a and this plate is plate b the plate which is mounted on the driven shaft is known as clutch plate so here plate b is clutch plate okay now this clutch plate since clutch plate or plate b is mounted on the driven shaft or since driven shaft is spline shaft it means this clutch plate b or plate b can move axially in driven shaft because what is the purpose of spline shaft the purpose of spline shaft is in spline shaft the plate or the gear or the wheels which is mounted on the spline shaft spline shaft can also move axially in that shaft so here this clutch plate b can move axially in the shaft in driven shaft because driven shaft is spline shaft now here uh spring is attached this spring is in compressed condition this spring is in compressed condition so due to the compression of spring here one force will induce which is which is spring force which i will denote as w and this force right now this force is trying to move this clutch plate is b, b in in this direction this this spring is compressed in this direction or deformed in this direction due to which spring force w will come in this direction this w will try to move clutch plate b in this direction 
this clutch plate B can move in this direction because this output shaft is splint shaft. But this plate A is mounted on the driving shaft and plate A driving shaft is not splint shaft. Means can I say this plate A cannot move in this direction? So what will happen when this with force W, this clutch plate B is trying to move in this direction? The motion of this clutch plate B is restricted by this plate A because this plate A cannot move in this direction. This W is trying to move clutch plate B in this direction and ultimately this clutch plate B is trying to move this plate A in this direction. But since plate A is mounted on the driving shaft, this plate A cannot move in this direction. So what will happen? Due to this force W, up this plate A and plate B will get engaged and due to and, and under this engagement pressure will create between this contacting surface why why pressure will create because this a and b is a, are engaged with each other forcefully why they are engaged with each other forcefully because this w is trying to move plate b in this direction and ultimately plate b due to uh, plate, due to motion of this plate b due to this w which is trying to move this plate b in this direction ultimately the due to which this plate B is trying to move plate A in this direction, but plate A cannot move in this direction because driving shaft is not splint shaft and ultimately pressure is due to this W pressure is creating between A and B because A and B are engaged forcefully. Okay, And this pressure will create in the contacting surface between A and B and here A and B are making contact with each other. Here what we have done in plate B. We, in plate B, we have uh, attached a friction lining. This red portion is known as friction lining, which is attached in plate B. Okay, what, why we have attached friction lining? Because uh, in clutch, to transmit torque, in friction clutch, we are using friction. Since we are using friction, there should be high coefficient of friction. To ensure high coefficient of friction, we need to attach friction lining. So, the friction lining of plate B is making contact with plate A. And in this friction lining, due to this W in engaged position, pressure will create. Due to pressure, normal force will come, and due to normal force, due to normal force, friction force will come, and due to friction force, friction torque will come, which will transmit from input shaft to output shaft because they are engaged forcefully. And since we are using friction to transmit torque from input shaft to output shaft, this clutch is the example of friction clutch. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of one shaft? First, what is the meaning of single plate clutch? In driven shaft, only one clutch plate is attached. And whenever in driven shaft only one clutch plate is engaged, we uh, we decide whether the clutch is single plate clutch or multi plate clutch by looking in the number of clutch plate in the driven shaft. And since in driven shaft one clutch plate is uh, attached, that's why this clutch is known as single plate clutch. What is the meaning of one side effective? So here, how many number of contacting surface are coming? Sir, so one pair of contacting surface are coming. This is contacting surface. So one pair of con if in single plate clutch, one pair of contacting surface is coming into picture, then that clutch is known as single plate plate clutch with one side effective. And in single plate clutch with one side effective, number of pair of contacting surface will be one. I will denote number of pair of contacting surface as a small n. Here value of a small n is one. Okay. So it is single plate clutch with one side effective. And during engaged position. A spring force W will induce, which will try to move blade B in this direction. Ultimately, this blade B will try to move A in this direction, but A cannot move in this direction because it is attached to driving 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 shaft, which is not a spline shaft. Due to which pressure will create in this contacting surface or uh, contacting surface. Due to this force W, due to pressure, normal force will come. Due to normal force, friction force will come. Ultimately, which due to friction force, friction torque will come, which will transmit from input to output shaft. So it is engaged position. And since here uh, one plate is mounted on the driving shaft, this is single plate clutch. And in this single plate clutch, one pair of contacting surface is coming, so it will be known as one side effect. Okay. Now, uh, the one purpose of clutch is to whenever we want, we we should able to disengage the clutch. So how disengagement will occur? So when under normal operating condition, when you have not pressed the clutch pedal, in that case. The plate A and plate B will be ultimately driving and driven shaft will be engaged with each other with force W, spring force W. But when you want to disengage this force, uh, this plate, disengage means why, what I want, there should be no contact between A and B. For that we need to be plate B in this direction because plate A cannot move because it is attached to the driving shaft. But we can move plate B in this direction. 
yes sir because plate b is mounted on a spline shaft now to move plate b in this direction what we will do we will uh, press this clutch pedal what will happen when you will place pl press this clutch pedal this point will try to move in this direction so due to the effort which we have applied in the clutch pedal it will create a force in this direction which will move plate b in this direction due to this movement spring will compress further and it will move plate b in this direction and as it plate b will move in this direction there will be no contact between a and b and if there is no contact means no contact pressure no contact pressure means no normal force no normal force means no friction force no friction force means no nor torque will transmit means clutch will disengage it will with each other this both plate will disengage with each other and no torque will transmit from input to output start when we you will press the clutch pedal and after pressing the clutch pedal when you will remove this that effort from the clutch pedal again this plate b will move in this direction until it is touching the plate a and after touching the plate a again there will uh, due to this force w pressure will create between a and b and both will get engaged due to pressure normal force will come normal force due to normal force friction force will come due to which friction torque will transmit from input to output so it is general working of plate clutch and in that plate clutch i have discussed the working of single plate clutch when one side of effective and conclusion is in single plate clutch at engaged position there will be one pair of contacting now what question will come in the analysis of single plate clutch with one side effective a disengagement process i have explained now question will come when they are engaged with this force w how much torque is transmitting from input to output side because at engaged position torque will transmit from input to output side or what will be the torque transmitting capacity of this clutch when they are at engaged position that analysis we need to do now uh, again i have made the same diagram with different manner of single plate clutch with one side effective this is plate a this is plate b in plate b we have attached the friction lining when you have not pressed the clutch pedal the both plate a and plate b will engage with uh, each other with spring force w okay and due to which pressure will create due to pressure normal force normal force due to normal force friction force due to friction force friction torque and that torque will transmit from input to output side and when you will press the clutch pedal this point will move in this direction and the there will be disengage the, the, the there will be disengagement of this contact between plate a and a and b and ultimately in input and output side will get get disengaged with it. now how much torque is transmitting when they are at engaged position that we have to calculate for that i have made this diagram suppose suppose uh, this friction lining is making contact so suppose outer radius of this friction lining i am denoting as r not what is r not r not is outer radius oh, i now i am doing the analysis of this clutch outer radius of friction lining okay similarly suppose ri what is ri ri is inner radius of friction lining the mu what is mu coefficient of friction between the both the plate at fr uh, of friction lining means mu is ultimately coefficient of friction between the co contacting surface and to ensure high coefficient of friction we have attached a friction lining so mu is coefficient of friction what is w can i say w is a spring force or this spring force is also known as axial force so w is a spring force or axial force at engaged position w is a spring force or axial force at engaged due to this due to this w pressure is creating or normal force is coming between friction and now what we are doing to do the analysis of this clutch from the center line suppose this is the center line at a radial distance r at a radial distance r i am considering a strip of thickness dr since i have taken this radial distance r so i am taking the thickness of this strip is dr but this friction lining is circular in surface na it is like this so this strip will also be in circular in sur surface whose thickness is dr so to show this surface i am making the side view of friction lining if you will draw the side view of friction lining it will look like this where 
R I is suppose this is the center line. R I is inner radius of friction lining, and R naught is outer radius of friction lining. Okay. Now at a distance R from central center line, I am radial distance R from center line. I am taking a strip whose thickness is dr. If you will show this strip in this side view, it will look like this. So at a radial distance small r from center line, I am taking a strip whose thickness is dr. Dr is the thickness of the strip. It is the side view. Now uh, this is the front view of friction lining. It is friction lining whose inner radius is. I am also mentioning here r i and outer radius is r naught. At a radial distance r from center line. I have taken a strip whose thickness is. Now what will happen? Here W force is coming, spring force in in this direction. Due to this W force, pressure is creating in this surface. Now if I will make the free body diagram of plate B, so W is trying to move plate B in this direction. So due to this pressure in plate B will create in this direction. If I am making the abdi of uh, contacting surface of plate B. And equal and opposite contacting pressure will create in the surface of plate A. But right now, I am drawing the FBD of plate B. So here, pressure will create in this direction. So suppose it is the pressure distribution in the friction lining. Okay, since W is trying to move plate B in this direction, in surface of plate B, pressure will create in this direction. Okay, so it is the pressure distribution. Now. This pressure, it is not necessary. Pressure will always be constant across friction lining. Right now, I had not taken the pressure constant across friction lining. So, since pressure is not constant, here first my first objective is to calculate total pressure force which is coming in this friction lining. But to calculate total pressure force, since pressure is distributed, first we need to calculate pressure which is coming, pressure force which is coming in in this strip, because whenever if some parameter is distributed any surface. So for that, first we will calculate whatever is first, like here pressure is distributed in this surface. So to calculate pressure force, first we calculate pressure force on a strip, because since thickness of a strip is very less, so can I assume that pressure is constant over a strip, because thickness of a strip is constant. So whenever any parameter is distributed in large surface, for any strip we can assume that that parameter is constant, because thickness of a strip is very less. So suppose the pressure at the strip, which is at a radial distance r from center line, is a small p. What is a small p? A small p is pressure at a radial distance r from center line. Okay. So a small p is uh, sorry. What is a small p? A small p is pressure at a radial distance r from from center line. So a small p is pressure at a radial distance r from center line. And in exam. Pressure as a function of R definitely examiner will give. Okay, otherwise we will study some theories like uniform pressure theory or uniform wear theory that will come later in which we will uh, assume some relation between pressure as a function of R. But right now, so imagine the pressure as a function of R is given. What is pressure P? It is pressure in the strip that is in, it is pressure at a radial distance R from center line. Now, if the pressure at a radial distance R from center line is small p, then we can easily calculate. Pressure over the strip because for strip we can assume that pressure is constant. If pressure is constant, then how we can calculate pressure force? Pressure into area. But that formula we will apply for strip because for strip we can assume pressure is constant. So first to do the uh, calculate the total pressure force, first we will calculate pressure force on strip. So first I am calculating pressure force on strip. Pressure force on strip. And suppose I am denoting pressure force on a strip as D because we are calculating for a strip. So D P capital N. Cap here, sorry, D capital P small N. Here uh, means I will denote total pressure force as capital P N. So pressure force on a strip we will denote as D capital P N. Now, how we will calculate pressure force on a strip? It will be pressure into area of strip. Pressure at a radial distance R is a small p, and into what will be the area of a strip? It is circular a strip. Which thickness is very less? Hollow circular strip, which thickness is very less? If any hollow circular portion is coupling, which thickness is very less? Then formula to calculate its area is pi dt or 2 pi rt, where r is radius of the strip and t is thickness of the strip. So this is the radius of this strip is smaller, and thickness of this strip is dr. So what will be the area of strip? 
टू पाई आर डी आर एंड यू कैन राइट इजली दिस एक्सप्रेशन विदाउट ड्रॉइंग दिस एक्सप्रेस दिस डायग्राम फॉर एग्जाम एग्जामिनेशन मीन फॉर इन एग्जामिनेशन यू नी नॉट टू ड्रा दिस डायग्राम ओनली कीप द इमेज ऑफ दिस डायग्राम इन यूर माइंड और वाट यू कैन कीप द एरिया ऑफ सर्कुलर हिस्ट्री विल ऑलवेज बी टू पाई आर डी आर इफ इट्स थिकनेस इज डी आर एंड डिस्टेंस इज आर रेडियल डिस्टेंस इज आर सो वाट विल बी प्रेशर फोर्स ऑन हिस्ट्री प्रेशर इन टू एरिया एंड प्रेशर इज स्मॉल पी एंड एरिया ऑफ स्ट्रिप इज टू पाई आर डी आर सो इट इज द प्रेशर फोर्स ऑन स्ट्रिप विच इज डी पी एम नाउ डू टू दिस प्रेशर फोर्स प्रेशर फोर्स बिकॉज इज प्रेशर फोर्स इज कमिंग इन नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन प्रेशर फोर्स विल ऑलवेज कम इन नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन सो कैन आई से दिस प्रेशर फोर्स इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल फोर्स ऑन स्ट्रिप सो दिस प्रेशर फोर्स इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल फोर्स ऑन स्ट्रिप एंड ड्यू टू नॉर्मल फोर्स फ्रिक्शन फोर्स विल कम so what will be the expression of friction force on strip so now i am calculating friction force on strip so friction force on strip formula to calculate friction force is mu mu is coefficient of friction into normal force so coefficient of friction is mu into normal force on strip is dpn which is nothing but p into 2 pi r dr After writing this expression, it is very easy to write this expression because pressure force or normal force is P into T by R dr. So friction force will be mu into P into two by R dr. But this parameter we are calculating over strip. Now, what will be the torque, friction torque transmitted by strip? Now we are writing the expression of friction torque transmitted. By strip. Here, those two expression are important. This normal force on strip and friction torque. Because uh, generally, examiner will ask how much torque will transmit. Total torque transmitted by the clutch. For that, we need to calculate first expression of torque transmitted by strip. Now, suppose I am denoting torque transmitted by strip as D capital T. Miss, I will denote total torque transmitted by capital T. Okay. Now, what will be the expression of torque transmitted by strip? so torque is transmitting due to friction and how much friction force is coming at the strip sir it is mu into p into 2 pi r dr so first write write the friction force on strip and friction force on strip is mu into p into 2 pi r dr now torque transmitted will be the distance of this friction force from center line and this friction force is coming at strip and distance of strip from center line is r so how much friction torque will be transmitted by strip it will be friction force on strip which is mu into p into 2 pi r dr and its distance from center line which is r so again r will get multiplied now here 2 pi r is coming and here this r it will become 2 pi r square so if we will simplify this expression it will become mu into p into 2 pi r square dr you want you can write uh, remember these expressions and after that analysis of this plate class will become very easy but but how to remember these expressions are very easy the area of strip you can keep in mind will be 2 pi r dr so pressure force will be p into 2 pi r dr friction force will be mu into pressure force that is mu but we are writing this expression for strip so friction force and strip will be mu into p into 2 pi r dr now what will be torque so for torque transmit uh, by uh, torque transmitted by strip we need to multiply friction force with radial distance r so torque transmitted will be friction force is mu into p into 2 pi r dr into r so again r is multiplying so it will become 2 pi r square dr so this is the expression of total pre sorry pressure force or normal force on strip and it is the expression of torque transmitted by strip now if i will ask what will be the expression of total pressure force on strip sorry total pressure force on friction lining so what will be the expression of total pressure force or normal force on friction lining so suppose i am i am denoting total pressure force as capital pn or total normal force and as capital pn why i am calculating this you will understand easily now this is the pressure force on strip so if i will integrate this expression for entire friction lining then we will get the expression of total pressure force on friction lining because it is pressure force on strip if we will integrate this expression for entire friction lining we will get the expression of total pressure force so total pressure force will be integration of pressure force on strip 
and pressure force on strip is pv into 2 pi r dr and we need to integrate this expression for across friction lining and inner radius of friction lining is ri and outer radius of friction lining is r naught so lower limit for a of this will be ri and outer limit will be why i am writing the limit of r because here dr is coming. so it is the expression of total pressure force over friction lining and why this expression is important and very it is very easy to remember uh, pressure force on a strip p into 2 pi r dr integrate and uh, integrate this expression for entire friction lining will get total pressure force on friction okay okay now uh, why this expression is important why we have calculated total pressure force because ultimately uh, ultimately this pressure is creating due to w so we need to make a relation between w and total pressure force okay so how we can make relation so you can see this pressure is coming due to w means can i say the total pressure force will get balanced by w now the pre due to pressure total pressure force is coming pn and since pressure is coming in this direction so can i say total pressure force will also come in this direction which is pn and w is coming in this direction now the ultimately the system in axial direction is in equilibrium because plate is not moving in this direction so since in axial direction system is in equilibrium so can i say net force in axial direction will be zero and the force which is coming in this direction is w that force will be balanced by the force which is coming in this direction and in this friction lining the force come which is coming in this direction is total pressure force or total normal force which is ultimately pn so can i say for plate clutch total pressure force and w the magnitude of total pressure force and w will remain same means it is the expression of total pressure force but can i say it will be same as w that is spring force or axial force if examiner is asking spring force or axial force means he is uh, uh, talking about w okay or examiner is giving uh, gi given spring force or w force means examiner is given value of w if examiner is asking uh, about total pressure force means he is talking about capital p n okay or if total pressure force is given means capital p1 is given but for plate clutch magnitude of both are same means if spring force or axial force is given means ultimately total pressure force is given these two are different thing it is spring force it is total pressure force but for plate clutch magnitude of both term are same is for plate clutch whether examiner is asking about pl pr total pressure force or normal force does uh, on friction lining that will be same as w that is spring force means can i say for plate clutch because right now we are doing the analysis of plate clutch spring force w will be same as total pressure force. Okay. and it will be same expression i am writing pressure force on strip is p into 2 pi r dr integrate over into entire friction lining it will give the expression of total pressure force which is same as w okay so here it is total pressure force but most importantly it is spring force because here spring force is important uh, because it is our input effort because to engage the clutch pad clutch plate a and b the spring force which is acting or uh, the axial force which is acting is w where expression of w is important which is same as total pressure force whose formula is this now what will be the expression of total torque transmitted so suppose i am denoting total torque transmitted as capital d only understand the formula uh, or concept which i am explaining the things which you have to remember i will summarize all the things separately and summary you have to remember uh, right now only understand all the derivations the total torque transmitting suppose i am denoting total torque transmitted as capital t so what is the expression of torque transmitted by strip it is mu into p into 2 pi r square dr so first write the expression of torque transmitted by strip which is mu into p into 2 pi r square dr and it is it is very easy to remember this how pressure force on strip is p into 2 pi r dr friction will, will be mu and to find friction torque again we need to multiply r and again you will multiply r it will become 2 pi r square dr so it is a expression of friction for torque transmitted by strip so what will the expression of total transmit torque transmitted integrate this expression for entire friction lining is integrate this expression from ri integrate this expression from ri to r not so it is the expression of total torque transmit these two equation are very important is if i will summarize this whole discussion for single plate clutch with one side effective uh, what is the expression of total spring force 
और स्प्रिंग फोर्स और टोटल प्रेशर फोर्स बोथ विल्स रिमेन सेम एंड फॉर्मूला टू कैलकुलेट द स्प्रिंग फोर्स और टोटल प्रेशर फोर्स इज इंटीग्रेशन आर आई टू आर नॉट पी इन टू टू पाई आर डी आर वाट इज द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ टोटल ट्रांसमिटेड इट इज इंटीग्रेशन आर आई टू आर नॉट म्यू इन टू पी इन टू टू पाई आर स्क्वायर डी आर एंड दिस थिंग्स वी हैव डिराइव फॉर सिंगल प्लेट क्लच विद वेन वन साइड इज इफेक्टिव वन साइड इज इफेक्टिव मीन्स हेयर नंबर ऑफ पेयर ऑफ कॉन्टेक्टिंग सर्फेस इज ओनली नाउ नाउ If examiner has given the pressure as a function of R, then this derivative through this formula you can easily calculate W and torque. If pressure as a function of R is given, but but if suppose pressure as a function of R is not given in the question, then how we can integrate these terms? Because without knowing the pressure as a function of R, because here dr is coming, we cannot integrate this term and this in, in this term. means to integrate uh, the, to integrate this term or this term or ultimately can i say to calculate w from this formula and to calculate torque from this formula we need to know the relation between pressure or distribution of pressure as a function of r if it is given in the question then no problem by integration you can solve but if pressure as a function of r is not given then what we will do we will assume some theory like we will study uh, some theory um, like uniform pressure theory or uniform wear theory and through this theory this theory is nothing uh, but through this theory we will assume a relation between pressure and r pressure and r means we will assume some pressure distribution across friction lining and by using this pressure distribution uh, we will integrate this term uh, and i will get the expression of w and we will integrate this term will get the expression of torque transmitted by the clutch but uh, this distribution only uh, you will use when pressure as a function of r is not given in the exam because if pressure as a function of r is given in the exam exam we need not any theory we need these theories when pressure as a function of r is not given so in order to find the relation between p and r we had two theory if if relation between p and r is not given this two theory are uniform pressure theory i in in short manner i will write uniform pressure theory as upt and second theory is uniform wear theory in short i will write uniform wear theory as uwt and in both the theory only thing which you have to remember is the relation of pressure as a function of r and after knowing that relation through integration you can easily find the expression of w and torque transmitted that is capital t so first we will discuss uniform pressure theory what is uniform the pressure theory as the name suggest here we are assuming the pressure across the friction lining is constant this pressure is uniform over the friction lining okay so in this theory what we are assuming pressure is p is constant pressure is constant over entire over entire friction lining and if we are assuming pressure is constant that theory is known as uniform pressure theory so first we will simplifying the expression of w and torque for uniform pressure theory it it will be mentioned in the exam that use uniform pressure theory to solve the question if examiner want to ask how much torque is transmitted or whatever examiner wa is, uh, want to ask by using uniform pressure theory it will be mentioned in the question okay but generally this theory is good when the clutch is new this theory gives good result when the clutch is new because when clutch is new this assumption is uh, some some uh, in nearly correct because when clutch is new in that case the the distribution of friction lining in at each point will be same means surface of friction lining will be same at every point so ultimately we can assume that in that case same contact pressure will create at every point of the friction line but what will happen when clutch will get some old wear of the clutch will occur and we if wear is occurring or wear of clutch is occurring the contact between uh, plate a and plate b will not be same at every point because wear of surface has occurred okay and in that case this theory will not give good result because ultimately when clutch is old pressure will not be uniform over the friction lining but if examiner has mentioned that solve the question by uniform pressure theory then we will solve the question by uniform pressure pressure theory because examiner has mentioned and uniform pressure theory is means pressure is constant over the entire surface now what will be the expression of w w or total pressure force pn is same in plate clutch formula to calculate this is integration ri to r not uh, uh, pressure into strip area which is 2 pi r dr now since in this theory we are assuming that pressure is constant so from this expression we can take pressure we can uh, uh, take pressure outside of this integration because pressure is constant 
and any constant term we can uh, bring outside of integration because pressure is constant so since pressure is constant we are bringing outside of uh, pressure p outside this integration two pi uh, is also constant so inside integration there will be ri to r not r dr now it is mathematics if you will integrate r it will be r square by 2 if you will put upper limit it will become r not square um, and if you will put lower limit it will become r square after integration this expression will come r not square minus r square divided by 2 and 1 by 2 and this 2 will get cancelled so ultimately by, by integration this expression of w that is spring force and the total pressure force on friction lining will be pressure p into pi r not square minus r square i will summarize all the discussion but if you are remembering this formula uh, you can easily find this formula by integrate integrating this term and pressure bringing pressure outside integration because it is constant but if you are remembering this formula remember this this formula is valid when pressure is constant because we have derived this expression for uniform okay but i will uh, summarize all this discussion ultimately and you need to only remember the summary so it is the expression of w or pn for uniform pressure now what will be the expression of torque so i am calculating the expression of torque now, in uh, formula to calculate torque is integration R i to R naught mu into P into 2 pi R square dr. Okay. This formula is very easy to remember. First, write the formula of pressure force on strip, which will be P into 2 pi R dr, friction force into mu, friction torque again multiply R, so this 2 pi R dr and into R will become 2 pi R square dr. Now, we need to integrate across, uh, this term across friction line. Now, and we are deriving the expression for uniform pressure theory. Pressure theory means pressure is constant. Here, mu is also constant. So, we can bring mu is coefficient of friction. If we, nothing is mentioned in the question, we will assume that mu is constant. We are bringing, uh, bringing mu outside of this integration. Pressure P is also constant because we are using uniform pressure theory. 2 pi is also constant. So, entire inside integration, only R square term will remain. R square dr. And we have to integrate this from Ri to if you will integrate this term, it will become R cube by 3. If you will put upper limit or lower limit, it will become R naught cube minus R i cube divided by 3. So if you will simplify this term, it, this expression will become 2 by 3. You can check calculation. It is your part. Mu into P into pi R naught cube minus R i cube. Okay, you can check this calculation. It is the expression of torque. But we will not remember this expression like this. What we will do? We will simplify this relation of torque in terms of W, that is spring force. Because generally what uh, happens, examiner will give the value of W, spring force, and you have to calculate torque. Or examiner will go, how much we need to, uh, torque transmitting capacity is required, means examiner will give the value of torque. And he will ask about the spring force W. So what we are doing? We are simplifying this relation in terms of W. And it is very easy. Suppose this is equation 2 and this is equation 1 so this equation from equation when we had derived the relation between uh, uh, expression of w in terms of pressure so from this equation the value of expression of pressure will be w upon this term w upon this term once again so from here if you will calculate the form expression of a small p it will be w upon pi in bracket r naught square minus r i square now if we in this expression if we'll replace this pressure p by this expression that is w upon pi r naught square minus r i square so ultimately this expression will get simplified in terms of w okay and it will be 2 by 3 mu p is w upon pi r naught square minus r i square into pi into r naught cube minus r i cube r naught cube minus r i cube so after simplification this relation will be 2 by 3 mu w now it is mathematical part if you will simplify this this pi pi will get cancelled and if you will simplify this this term will become i am writing in this term manner mu w into 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i cube upon r naught square minus r you can check calculation but it will come like this so it is the expression of torque transmitted by the clutch for uniform pressure theory 
and you need to rem if you want you can remember this formula otherwise you can derive this formula through integration so i am writing the final formula for uniform pressure theory the final formula for uniform pressure theory is for single plate clutch with one side effective formula of w is w is equal to total pressure force pn is equal to pressure p into pi r not square minus r square if you want you can remember this okay but it is for uniform pressure theory second formula to calculate torque in terms of w i am writing the formula to calculate torque is mu w into 2 by 3 r not cube minus r i cube upon r not square minus r i r i square okay this term is also known as mean radius so you can also remember the formula of torque like this the formula of torque will be mu w into r m and for uniform pressure theory formula to calculate r m is 2 by 3 r m is known as mean radius formula to calculate r m is 2 by 3 r not cube minus r i cube upon r not square minus r i square okay so it is uniform pressure theory now next theory which we will discuss is uniform wear theory in short i will write uniform wear theory as u w t now what is uniform wear theory in uniform wear theory we assume that rate of wear across friction lining is constant means we are considering wear but we are assume rate of wear is constant okay and this you know, this uh, theory is will give more accurate result for old clutch but i will explain these things later but uh, for new clutch uh, uniform wear theory pressure theory will give more accurate result for uniform wear theory uh, sorry for old clutches uniform wear theory will give more accurate result because because when the clutch will uh, will become old wear will start and wear will start means pressure will not remain constant across friction lining so in that case uniform wear theory will give more accurate and in uniform wear theory you have to remember if uniform wear theory we are using in that case the product of pressure p and radial distance r will remain constant means in uniform wear theory pressure is not constant the product of pressure and r is constant in uniform pressure theory sorry wear theory product of pressure into r is constant and right now i am denoting this constant at c it is but just a constant which is product of pressure and r so for uniform prayer wear theory product of pressure and r will constant means at h point p product of p and r will be constant suppose at inner radius pressure is p1 so uh, p1 so at inner radius product of p into r will be p1 into r i for outer radius pressure is p2 so uh, for outer radius product of p into r will be p2 into r not this two term will be constant means p1 r i into r i will be equal to p2 into r not means p1 and p2 are not same but product of p into r is same for uniform wear theory and i am denoting that constant as c now from this expression you can also make one conclusion that pressure p is c upon r means can i say for uniform wear theory pressure is inversely proportional to r pressure is inversely proportional to r means as r will increase pressure will decrease means can i say in uniform pressure theory pressure p will be maximum at inner radius that is at r equal to ri why because when r is increasing pressure is decreasing so definitely pressure will be maximum at inner radius and it will be means pressure will be maximum at inner radius and it will be minimum at outer radius is where pressure will be minimum at outer radius that is r equal to r not but why i am write written separately pressure will be maximum at inner radius because here maximum pressure is more important because in question permissible pressure is given means pressure cannot be more than permissible pressure it should be less than equal to permissible pressure and to ensure that actual pressure is less than equal to permissible pressure we need to ensure maximum pressure is less than equal to permissible pressure because if maximum is suppose permissible pressure is 5 and if maximum pressure is either equal to 5 or less than 5 5 then pressure of all other point definitely it will be less than 5 because we are ensuring maximum pressure is not crossing permissible so that's why this expression of maximum pressure is important and in uniform wear theory pressure will be maximum at inner radius now suppose in exam maximum pressure is given so maximum pressure will be maximum at inner radius so in this equation if we will replace p by p max then we need to replace r by ri because maximum as pr pressure is maximum at inner radius so can i say for uniform wear theory product of p into r is constant which i am denoting as c and if p is equal to p max then r will be equal to ri so this value of c will be equal to p max into ri 
means if we exam pre maximum pressure is given so we can find the value of c formula to calculate c is nothing but pr product of p into r which i am assuming for uniform wear theory is constant and if maximum pressure will is given then c will be equal to maximum pressure into ri because pressure is maximum at inner radius and this product is constant that's why this product will be equal to c which is product of p into r okay now it is uniform wear theory now we are deriving the expression of w and torque for uniform wear theory first i am deriving the expression of w what is the formula to calculate expression of w formula to calculate w is integration e into 2 pi r strip area that is 2 pi r dr and we need to integrate this term in from r i to r not now here pressure is not constant constant is c which is the product of p into r now we know the pressure is nothing but c upon r so can, can we can i replace this p by c by r or and if you will replace this expression will become r i to r not pressure by c by r so it will be c by r into 2 pi r dr now this c is constant so we can bring c outside integration this 2 pi is also constant now this r r will get cancelled means inside integration only dr will remain and integration of dr is r and if you will put upper limit it will become r not by uh, putting in lower limit it will become ri so ultimately after integration this will come r not minus ri it is the formula to calculate w and w and for plate class w and total pressure force both are same and the formula to calculate this is 2 pi c in bracket r not minus r again you can remember this expression for uniform wear theory but if you are remembering this remember this is only valid for uniform wear theory okay now here c you can calculate if maximum pressure is given c is p max into ri if minimum pressure is given then c max will be p minimum and pressure will be minimum at outer radius into r not but generally in exam maximum pressure will be given that's why this expression is important calculate so it is the formula to calculate w by uniform wear theory now we have to derive the expression of torque transmitted total torque transmitted by the clutch and what is the formula to calculate total torque transmitted by the clutch formula to calculate total torque transmitted is integration ri to r not mu into p into 2 pi r square dr how to remember this pressure force in strip is p into 2 pi r dr friction force into mu friction torque again multiply r so this formula will come and integrate for it this expression for entire friction lining will get the total torque transfer again mu is constant so we can bring mu outside integration again we can replace i am doing directly p by c by r because formula of p is c by r now in this expression c is constant so we can bring this c outside integration 2 pi is constant so we can bring 2 pi outside integration now here remaining term will be 1 by r into r square and 1 by r into r square will be r so inside integration r will remain so it will come r dr from r i to now this is mathematics integration of r will be r square by 2 by putting limit it will come r not square minus r square divided by 2 and this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled so ultimately this expression of torque will come mu c into pi into r not square minus r i square into pi divide by 2 but divide by 2 will is getting cancel with this 2 so it is the expression of torque but we will not remember this formula this formula you can easily find by integration what we will do we will simplify this expression in terms of w as we did while discussing uniform pressure theory and how we will simplify this torque equation in terms of w so here we have calculated the expression of w in terms of c so from this expression we can write the expression of c it will be w upon 2 pi in bracket r not minus r i now this is the expression of c so here we can replace this c by this expression and if you will do this that this torque equation will come in terms of w what what will be this equation mu into c c is w upon 2 pi r not minus r i into this pi into r not square minus r square it is like a square minus b square and expression of a square minus b square is a minus b into a plus b so it will be r not plus r i into r not minus r i now it is mathematics this r not minus r i term or this term will get cancel this pi pi will get cancel and if you will simplify this this relation will become mu into w divided by 2 r not plus ri 
okay so this torque relation will be be mu into w into r not plus r i divided by two. now we can read this torque relation as mu w into r m so it is mu it is w can i say this is r m that is mean radius and for uniform wear theory the expression to calculate mean radius is r not plus r i divided by 2 if you want you can remember this expression uh, of torque for uniform wear theory now if i will summarize all this discussion for plate clutch single plate clutch with one side effective remember when in single plate clutch one side is effective number of pair of contacting surface will be one why i am mentioning this point again again when i will go for further uh, an discussion of plate clutch like multi plate clutch or single plate clutch with both side effective in those cases only difference which will arise is number of pair of contacting surface will increase rest of the analysis will be same okay. so if i will summarize all the discussion for single plate clutch with one side effective if in question relation between pressure and r is given if already given then we need not required any theory we, if relation of distribution of pressure as a function of r is given neither we require uniform pressure theory nor we require uniform wear theory we can calculate w and torque by simple integration and the formula to calculate w in terms of integration is w is a spring force that will be equal to total pressure force pn and formula to calculate this is ri to r not pressure for integration ri to r not pressure force on strip which is p into 2 pi r dr this is master equation you need to remember this formula to calculate total torque transmitted is first fi find expression of torque transmitted by strip which is first write the expression of pressure uh, force on strip which is p into 2 pi r dr now uh, friction force for that we need to multiply mu now for friction torque again we need to multiply this term with r and if you will multiply this term with r this uh, one r is already coming and r in r will become r now we will integrate this term for across friction line we will get the expression of total trans 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 transmitted on to integrate across friction line we need to integrate this from r i to this two equation is very important the pressure as a function of r is given we can by integration we can find w and torque okay now but if pressure as a distribution of r is not given examiner will mention theory and we have studied two type of theory one is uniform pressure theory in uniform pressure theory in short i will write uniform pressure theory is as upt in uniform pressure theory what we are assuming pressure across friction lining is constant now after this assumption you can easily find the expression of w and torque by integration because now pressure is constant you can bring pressure outside integration because it is constant but after integration for uniform pressure theory formula which are coming if you want you can remember okay but that formula will only be valid for uniform pressure theory and the formula for uniform pressure theory we have already derived and by uniform pressure theory the expression to calculate w that is spring force or total pressure force is pressure p into pi r not square minus r square. but this formula is only valid for uniform pressure the formula to calculate torque transmitted by the clutch is by uniform pressure theory the formula is mu w into rm and expression of rm for uniform pressure theory is 2 by 3 r not cube minus r i cube upon r not square minus r okay similarly next theory which we have studied is uniform pr theory that is u w t in uniform wear theory what we are assuming that product of p into r is constant which and this that constant i am representing as c means uniform wear theory means pressure is not constant Pr product of p into r is constant and now through expression you can conclude that if r is increasing pressure will decrease means pressure will be maximum at inner radius and if in question maximum pressure is given you can easily calculate the value of c and formula to calculate value of c is if maximum pressure is given means p is p max and p will be at maximum pressure where at inner radius or minimum radius and inner radius is ri so formula to calculate c is p max into ri because product of p into r is constant and after calculating c by integration you can again find the expression of w and torque and this expression you can remember for uniform wear theory and 
फॉर यूनिफॉर्म वियर थ्योरी फॉर्मुला टू कैलकुलेट डब्ल्यू एड और टोटल प्रेशर फोर्स इज टू पाई सी यार सी इज नथिंग बट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ पी इन टू आर इफ एक्शन प्रेशर इज गिवेन यू कैन कैलकुलेट सी एन टू आर नॉट माइनस आर सिमिलरली फॉर्मुला टू कैलकुलेट टॉर्क इज म्यू डब्ल्यू इन टू आर एम एंड फॉर यूनिफॉर्म वियर थ्योरी द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ आर एम इज नथिंग बट आर नॉट प्लस आर ए डिवाइड बाई टू दैट इज अर्थमेटिक मीन ऑफ आर नॉट एंड आर एम ओके तो दिस आर द समरी दिस इज द समरी ऑफ सिंगल प्लेट क्लच विथ वन साइड इफेक्ट ओके नाउ वी विल डिस्कस सिंगल प्लेट क्लच विथ बोथ साउड इफेक्टिव एंड इन दैट डिस्कशन ओनली यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वाट डिफरेंस विल कम विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस रिलेशन Okay, and if all if you will only uh, remember that difference for single plate clutch with both side effective and for multi plate clutch. After that, I will also discuss multi plate clutch. The, and uh, the, if you will only remember that difference, which will come on those cases as compared to single plate clutch with one side effective, the analysis will become very easy. And what we will do after completing sing, uh, the discussion of single plate clutch with both side effective and multi plate clutch, again I will uh, summarize whole the discussion. and you will only remember those summary which i will make for single plate clutch with one side effective both side effective and multi plate clutch then you will be able to solve the question of uh, any plate clutch whether the question is coming single plate clutch with one side effective whether question is coming from single plate clutch both side effective or whether question is coming from multi plate clutch. if you understand this you will easily understand the concept of single plate clutch both side effective and multi plate clutch and after that i will summarize entire plate clutch on only you need to remember that summary the problem okay so student we have discussed single plate clutch with one side effective in that case number of pair of contacting surface is one now we will discuss single plate clutch with both side effective if you have understood single plate clutch with one side effective you will easily understand single plate clutch when both side is effective okay now in when in sing what is the difference in this case as compared to single plate clutch when one side is effective the difference is that in single plate clutch when both side is effective number of pair of contacting surface will be two how that i will explain through these diagrams now uh, again this is simple clutch single plate clutch here you if you will press clutch pedal clutch pedal the uh, input and output side will get disengaged under normal position input and output side will be engaged and under when they are engaged torque is transmitting from input and output side but here at engaged position important point is number of pair of contacting surface is two first of all how why this clutch this is the symmetric diagram of this case okay i will explain this diagram but here why this clutch is known as single plate clutch so i have already explained e, uh, explained if number of plate in driven shaft driven shaft don't see on driving shaft if number of plate on driven shaft is one then that clutch is known as single plate clutch so here this shaft is driven shaft and you can see in this shaft this yellow plate is clutch plate and in this driven shaft we have mounted only one plate means again this is single plate clutch okay single plate clutch because number of plate on driven shaft is one now uh to explain is working ultimately to explain why in this case number of pair of contacting surface is two i am using this diagram both diagram are same now here you can see this shaft is driving shaft or input shaft this shaft is driven shaft now number of plate or clutch plate on driven shaft is this plate only one that's why this case is single plate clutch suppose i am denoting uh, this clutch plate as one and since number of plate on clutch plate is one therefore this is single plate clutch now here the the difference as compared to single plate clutch when one side is effective here difference is that here in driving shaft we have mounted two plate one plate a is directly mounted on the driving shaft and since driving shaft is not a splint shaft the plate a cannot move like this in driving shaft we have mount another plate which is plate b but not directly first don't get confused this plate b is not mounted on driven shaft it is not mounted here you can see there is slight gap this plate b we have attached in this bolt and three this bolt this is connected through a which is connected to driving shaft means here you can see this plate b is ultimately ultimately mounted on the driving shaft driving shaft if this driving shaft is rotating this plate a will also rotate this plate b will also rotate okay 
this clutch plate will one will rotate when they are in engaged position because it is not connected to driving shaft it is connected to driven shaft if they are engaged then torque will transmit from driving to driven if clutch plate one is not engaged with this uh, plate a or plate b then no torque will transmit from input and output shaft but here plate a is directly connected to driving shaft and this plate b is also connected to driving shaft through this bolt means a and b are the part of driving shaft and this plate one is the part of driven shaft and since in driven shaft only one plate is attached that's why this clutch is known as single plate clutch now here uh, this is uh, this is plate b this plate b sometimes also known as pressure plate or pressure now how it's work in this bolt here spring is attached in this bolt like this and this spring is in compressed condition so what will happen due to this compression of spring here spring force will come and since spring is compressed means deflected in this direction so spring force will come in this direction now what will happen this spring force will try to move plate b in this direction plate b can move in this direction because it is connected in bolt and in bolt it can move like this okay it can move like this so this spring force w is trying to move plate b in this direction now what will happen now alongside this plate b plate 1 is attached which is attached on the driven shaft now when this w force spring force is suppose w when this w force will try to move plate b in this direction it will try to move plate 1 in this direction yes sir it will try to move plate 1 in this direction now again plate 1 can move in this direction plate because plate 1 is connected on the driven shaft which is a splined shaft so plate 1 can also move in this direction but what will happen with the same force w because w is applying here in plate b which is transferring to plate 1 with this same force w plate 1 will try to move plate a in this direction but plate a cannot move in this direction because it is directly connected to driving shaft which is not a splined shaft since plate a cannot move in this direction so what will happen plate a will apply a pressure in plate 1 and here it is the contacting surface here you can you see here you can see it is the contacting surface between plate a and clutch plate 1 because this is friction lining and this is also friction lining friction lining is the part of plate 1 so it is the contacting surface between plate a and plate 1 and in this contacting surface since uh, plate 1 with force w is trying to move plate a in this direction but plate a cannot move in this direction so it will apply equal and opposite pressure over plate 1 like this okay. so now similarly this plate b is trying to move plate 1 in this direction but since play, 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 since plate a is not allowing plate uh, plate a is not allowing plate 1 to move in this direction means right now plate 1 cannot move in this direction so what will happen since plate b is trying to move plate 1 in this direction but due to the restriction of plate a plate a cannot move in this direction so what will happen plate 1 will apply opposite pressure in plate b over contacting surface and these are the contacting surface between plate 1 and plate b so here you can see number of pair of contacting surface here one contacting surface pair of contacting surface is this which is occurring between plate a and plate 1 and here another contacting surface is this which is occurring between plate 1 and plate b means how much pair of contacting surface is there here two pair of contacting surface one between plate a and plate 1 and another between plate 1 and plate 2 okay and clutch plate is only one which both side is making contact that's why we are saying both side is effective so in this case number of pair of contacting surface will be two and symmetric diagram of this clutch is like this okay and how it is working you can imagine what will happen when you will push this clutch pedal what will happen when you will push this clutch pedal it will move pressure plate b in this direction and when pressure b will move in this direction the contact between uh, plate b and there will be no contact between plate b and plate 1 and is there since there is no contact between plate b and plate 1 there will be no pressure between plate b and plate 1 and if there is no pressure between plate b and plate 1 similarly there will be no pressure between plate 1 and plate a also means input and output shaft will get disengaged but this will occur when you will press this clutch pedal under normal position with spring force w plate b will is mount 
wants to go in this direction uh, which is trying to move plate 1 in this direction ultimately which is trying to move plate a in this direction but since plate a cannot move in this direction so plate a will apply pressure on plate 1 okay and due to due to the restriction of plate a plate a 1 cannot move in this direction so plate 1 will apply pressure on plate b which is will be balanced by this force w and here two may pair of contacting surfaces coming into picture means in single plate class summary is number of pair of contacting surface will be two now the next important thing is how you will calculate this spring force w or total pressure force on each plate and how you will calculate torque transmitted by the clutch if you have derived the formula of a spring force w or total pressure force on each friction lining and torque transmitted by clutch for single plate clutch with one side effective then you will easily understand this case also only difference which will come is only difference which will come is when single plate clutch with both side effective first i am writing the formula of uh, w or total pressure force on each friction lining total pressure force on each contacting surface is pn and that will be equal to w there will be no change in the formula of w whether it is single plate clutch with one side effective whether it is single plate clutch with both side effective why first of all i am writing the formula of uh, total pressure force phase for single plate clutch when one side effective formula was pressure force on is or force on strip is p into 2 pi r dr if we will integrate this from ri to r night i am writing this expression in terms of integration it will give total pressure force on fric friction lining okay it is the expression of total pressure force on friction lining for single plate clutch with one side effective same expression will be total pressure force on the friction lining for single plate clutch with both side effective and that total pressure force will again will be equal to w that is spring force or axial force why same expression is coming because here you can uh, uh, with respect to for spring force w you can imagine this plates are in series connection and in series connection if total force is f spring force on each of the spring will also be equal to f that is the one of the property of series connection how here uh, suppose i am making the fbd of this contacting surface of plate b it is the contacting surface of plate b what will happen suppose i am representing this contacting surface as a small a and this contacting surface as a small b and in this contacting surface two part will come one will belong to plate b and another will belong to clutch plate 1 so suppose it is the contacting surface for plate b in plate b spring force w is coming and here pressure is coming in this direction now now try to imagine whatever pressure will come in this direction equal and opposite pressure will come in this contacting surface of plate 1 here in contacting surface of plate b pressure is coming in this direction so equal and opposite pressure will come in this contacting surface which are the points of plate 1 here here at each contact points two point will come one will belong to plate b and one will belong to plate 1 the point which is belonging to plate 1 plate b sorry pressure is coming in this direction equal and opposite pressure will come at this location at the point which is belonging to plate 1 so if i will draw this distribution for plate 1 over friction lining it will be equal and opposite will be equal and opposite i'm drawing rough diagram now whatever pressure in plate 1 is coming in this direction equal and opposite pressure will come in this direction because here both side of plate 1 is making contact and you, you, you already know plate E is applying in this surface of plate 1 in pressure in, in this direction so here pressure will come in this direction due to the contact between plate B and plate 1 over the contact region of plate 1 pressure is coming in this direction and this pressure will get balanced by this pressure now if you will draw the abody of contacting surface of plate A in plate A pressure will come in this Okay, I have made rough distribution. Okay, pressure will come in this direction. Okay, now you can see this system is in equilibrium. So here by integration, the total pressure force which is coming is suppose is supposed P R capital P R, and same derivation will follow, which we have followed for single plate clutch with one side effective. Again, total pressure force will come P N, 
and that will be equal to W because this system is in equilibrium. Now, equal and opposite Pn will come in this direction. And same if you will integrate this term, here Pn will come in this direction and both will get balance each other. Now, similarly, here Pn will come in this direction. And this Pn will be will be uh, satisfied by the reaction of the support in driven shaft, sorry, driving shaft, because driving shaft there will be support which will not allow to move this plate or shaft in this direction. So here this pressure force will be balanced by the reaction on the support system of driving shaft. So ultimately you can see the total pressure force in each contacting surface is Pn, and that Pn is equal to a spring force or axial force which is applying by this spring. So here where it will not here the expression of w will not depend upon the number of pair of contacting surface it, the with, whether the number of pair of contacting surface is 1 or whether the number of pair of the contacting surface is 2 the expression of spring force that is w will remain same and that will be equal to total pressure force on each friction lining and it will be equal to integration ri to r naught p into 2 pi r dr in terms of integration if you are writing the expression but here changes will come in the expression of torque and it is very easy How, what change will come what is the expression of torque transmitted by the clutch when number of pair of contacting surface is one the expression is integration r i to r naught into uh, mu into p into 2 pi r square dr it is the expression of torque transmitted by the clutch with one contacting surface if number of pair of contacting surface is more than one, like in this case number of pair of contacting surface is two, or number of pair of contacting surfaces are two, so what will happen? It is the torque transmitted by one pair of contacting surface. What will be the torque transmitted by two pair of contacting surface? What we will do? We will uh, multiply this term by two. Means we will ultimately this term by number of pair of contacting surface. Means summary is in plate clutch. When there are more than one number of pair contacting surface are involved, suppose I am denoting that number of pair of contacting surface as small n. For single plate clutch with one side effective, value of small n is one. With for single plate clutch, both side effective, number of small value of small n is two. But there will be no change in the formula of W. It will not depend upon the number of pair of contacting surface. Formula of W will be equal to it will be equal to total pressure force on each friction lining, and it will be equal to integration R i to R naught small p into two pi r dr. Okay, there will change in the formula to calculate torque transmitted and how what change will come? The formula to calculate torque transmitted will be first calculate torque transmitted by one pair of quantity sur which, uh, surface which is integration R i to R naught mu into P into 2 pi R square dr. Multiply this torque transmitted by one pair of quantity surface by number of pair of quantity surface. Like here two quantity surface are coming, two pair of quantity surface are coming. Therefore, I have multiplied this term as 2. Similarly, you can write the formula for uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory. Hi. Pi uniform pressure theory. If you suppose we are applying uniform pressure theory, same expression of W W expression of W will remain same. For uniform pressure theory, formula to calculate W is small pressure P, which is constant, into pi into R naught square minus R A square. And it is also total pressure force on each friction line. It is the expression of W. There will be no change. Now, what will be the expression of torque transmitted? Torque transmitted for by uniform pressure theory by one pair of contacting surface. The formula to calculate torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory, if contacting number of pair of contacting surface is one, the formula is mu w into R m, and for uniform pressure theory, R m is two by three R naught cube minus R i cube upon R naught square minus R i square. Now we will multiply this term with number of pair of contacting surface, which is two in this case. Similarly, uniform wear theory. Uniform wear theory means product of P into R will remain constant, which I am denoting as C, and we can calculate C by using P max into R i. Because pressure will be maximum because pressure will be maximum at inner radius. Now, again, the expression of total pressure force in each friction lining or spring force or W will remain same, and by uniform wear, wear theory, the expression was 2 pi capital C into R naught minus R i. Now, formula of torque transmitted. First, write the formula of torque transmitted by one pair of contacting surface, and the formula is mu w into mean radius for uniform wear theory. Mean radius is r naught plus r i divided by two. Now, we will multiply this term by number of pair of contacting surface, which is two in this case. It is single plate clutch with both side effects. Now, if question is coming with single for single plate clutch and diagram is not given, so examiner will mention 
whether one side is effective then take number of pair of contacting surface equal to 1 or whether two both side is effective then take number of pair of contacting surface equal to 2 but in single plate clutch if nothing is mentioned mean it is not examiner has mentioned that clutch is single plate clutch but it is not mentioned number of pair of contacting surface is either 1 or 2 then solve the problem by taking no one pair of contacting surface if it is not mentioned in the examination okay now if you understood single plate clutch with both side effective you will easily understand multi plate clutch in multi plate clutch there will be more than one plate in driven shaft like here you can see in driven shaft i have, I have engaged two plate more than one means it is multi plate clutch so in multi plate clutch number of plates on driven shaft will be more than now working of this multi plate clutch will be sub like this single plate clutch when both side are effective only difference is in this case in driven shot one plate was in uh, was mount is mounted in multi plate clutch in driven shot more than one plate is mounted otherwise working is same as single plate clutch both side effective how this both plate one and two is mounted on the driven shot this is plate A, suppose this is plate B and this plate is plate C. This plate A is directly mounted on the driving shaft. This plate B or pressure plate B, pressure plate B it is not mounted on dri driven shaft. It is again mounted on direct driving shaft but not directly through this bolt. Same as plate B, plate C which is intermediate plate, this plate C. Again through bolt is mounted on the driving, driving shaft. Means can I say in this diagram, in this diagram, this plate A, this plate C and this plate B are mounted on driving shaft, not on driving shaft, driving shaft, which uh, out of which A is directly mounted on driving shaft, D and B is through this bolt is mounted or are mounted on the driving shaft. And this plate 1 and plate 2 A are mounted on the driven shaft. That's why they are clutch plates, which is and uh, their number is more than one. That's why this clutch is multi-plate. So in multi-plate clutch, Suppose if I am denoting a small n1 a, as number of plates on driving shaft, which is 3 in this case. And similarly, suppose a small n2 is number of plates on driven shaft. Now, in this arrangement, n1 will be equal to n2 plus 1 means number of plates on driven shaft will be dr sorry driving shaft will be number of plate on driven shaft plus 1 like in this case number of plate on driven shaft is 2 so number of plate on driving shaft will be 2 plus 1 that is 3 you can check this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 okay. so n1 will be equal to n2 plus 1 now working is same as single plate clutch with both side effective means when uh, it is engaged position this spring will be in compressed po position due to which spring force w will come in this direction which will try to move plate b in this direction which will try to move plate 2 in this direction and ultimately this plate 2 with force w will try to move this plate c in this direction and c can move in this direction th through this bolt ultimately this c will try to move one in this direction and this one will try to move plate a in this direction but since plate A is attached to the driving shaft which is not a spline shaft, so plate A cannot move in this direction. So it will apply equal and opposite pressure in this surface. You can here see. The surface which I am marking, see carefully because it will decide number of pair of contacting surface. Now since plate A is applying equal and opposite pressure in plate 1, means now plate 1 cannot move in this direction because it is restricted by plate A. So what will happen? Plate 1 will apply a pressure on plate 2 in this surface. Sorry, pl plate 1 will apply pressure on plate C in this contact region. And since the motion of plate C is restricted by plate 1, means now plate C cannot move in this direction. So now plate C will apply pressure on plate 2 in this contacting surface. I am using some different color. In this contacting surface. And due to this restriction, now plate 2 cannot move in this direction. So plate 2 will apply pressure on plate B in this contacting surface. 
so here if you will count number of pair of contacting surface these are one two one this contact this contacting surface between plate a and plate one this is uh, another contact surface which is between plate one and c it is another contact surface which is between plate c and two this is another contact surface which is between plate two and plate b means how many pair of contacting surface are coming here four how many pair of contacting surface are coming here four one is between a and plate i'm writing here number of pair of contacting surface one contacting surface is coming between plate a and plate one another is coming between plate one and plate c another contacting surface is coming between plate c and plate two and another contacting surface is pair of contact surface is coming between plate two and plate b how many pair of contacting surface is coming four how many uh, total number of plates are involved in this case n1 number of plate on driving shaft which is which is which are three n2 is number of plates on driven shaft which are two so n1 is three n12 is two if you will add n1 and n2 it will be five n1 is three n2 is two so it will be in this case five n1 plus n2 will be five and number of pair of contacting surface is four which is one lesser than five means five minus one is number of pair of contacting surface means summary is in multi plate clutch if small n1 is number of pair on driving shaft small n2 is number of pair in driven shaft in exam only if n2 is given you can calculate n1 from this equation in that case if small n is number of pair of contacting surfaces then the formula to calculate this small n is n1 plus n2 minus 1 like in this diagram n1 is 3 n2 is 2 so 3 plus 2 that is 5 minus 1 it will come 4 that is 4 number of pair of contacts okay you need to remember this expression now you can easily uh, conclude the analysis of multi-plate class because we have already uh, discussed the one single plate clutch with both side effective and this is same as single plate clutch with both side effective only difference is more than two number of pair of contacting surface are coming because n1 n2 is more than one okay like in single plate clutch both side effective two pair of contacting surface was coming here more than two pair of contacting surface i will come whose formula uh, whose formula to calculate is this n1 plus n2 minus 1 now Again, in, when we have discussed single plate class with both side effective, in that case we already discussed, there will be no change in the formula to calculate W. That W will be equal to total pressure force on each friction lining. So, and expression will remain same, integration Ri to R0, P small p into 2 pi R dr. It will not depend upon the number of pair of quantity surface. Now, there will be change in the formula to calculate torque transmitted. And what is the change? First, calculate torque transmitted by one pair of quantity surface, whose formula is integration R i to R naught mu into P into 2 pi R square dr. And multiply this expression by number of pair of quantity surface, you will get total torque transmitted. Means, if you will summarize multi-plate clutch, summary is, there will be no change on this formula to calculate W, that is spring force or axial force, that will be equal to total pressure force on each for pressure lining. And its formula will be integration R i to R naught P into 2 pi R pressure into pressure area of steel now what will be the expression of torque transmitted first calculate torque transmitted by one pair of content survey which is integration r i to r naught mu into p into 2 pi r square dr and multiply this term by number of pair of contacting surface similarly if you will uh, summarize this result for 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 uniform pressure and uniform wear theory same conclusion for uniform pressure theory there is no change in the expression of w or pn it will be for uniform pressure theory the formula of w is p small p into pi r naught square minus r naught square same formula will remain for w by uniform pressure now torque transmitted expression of torque transmitted by uniform pair pressure theory for one pair of contacting surface is mu w into rm and for uniform pressure theory rm is 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i cube upon r naught square minus r i square now we will multiply this term by number of pair of contacting so it is the conclusion by uniform similarly if you will conclude this for uniform wear theory uniform wear theory means product of p into r is constant which i am denoting as c and formula to calculate c is p max into r i because pressure will be maximum at inner radius 
now the same expre uh, expression of w will remain same w will be equal to pn which is which formula is 2 pi c into r naught minus ri now formula of torque will be first find write the formula of torque transmitted for one pair of contacting surface and for uniform wear theory this formula is mu w mu w into rm and rm is r naught plus ri divided by 2 now we will multiply this expression by number of pair of things so it is the complete analysis of plate clutch and in plate clutch we had discussed single plate clutch one side effective single plate clutch both side effective and multi plate clutch and if you summarize whole this discussion the simple summary is for plate clutch whether it is single plate clutch one side effective both side effective or uh, multi plate clutch the expression of w or pn will remain same and it is integration ri to r naught in terms of integration p into 2 pi r dr by uniform pressure theory it will be p into pi r naught square minus r square by uniform wear theory it will be equal to 2 pi c r naught minus r similarly for all type of plate clutch formula to calculate torque transmitted is integration r i to r naught mu p 2 pi r square dr and multiplied this term is by number of pair of contacting surface this in torque formula number of pair of contacting surface will come into picture similarly by uh, uniform pressure theory the formula will be uh, mu w into r m r m is 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i cube upon r naught square minus r square and multiply this term by number of pair of contacting surface similarly by uniform wear theory formula is mu w into r m r m is for uniform wear theory it is r naught plus r i divided by 2 and multiply this term by number of pair of contacting surface and number of pair of contacting surface for single plate clutch with one side effective is 1 for single plate clutch with both side effective is 2 if in exam exam single plate clutch is mentioned but it is not mentioned whether one side is effective or both side is effective or number of pair of contacting surface is not given in clutch in question then for single plate clutch take value of n equal to 1 by assuming one side effective now for multi plate clutch formula to calculate number of pair of contacting surface is n1 plus n2 minus 1 where n1 is number of plates on driving shaft and n2 is number of clutch plates or number of plate on driven shaft and value of n1 will be one uh, will be equal to n2 plus 1 you want you can remember this also n1 will be equal to n2 plus 1 and it is the formula to calculate number of pair of contacting surface for multiple so it is the complete summary of plate clutch now we will discuss some question from plate clutch by using this concept okay now we will discuss some questions from plate clutch it is first question what this question is saying a plate clutch consist one pair of contacting surface mean number of pair of contact surface is already given it is one now the inner and outer diameter of the friction disc or lining are 120 mm and 240 mm so inner diameter is given but if we have written the formula in terms of inner radius so we inner diameter is 120 mm definitely inner radius that is ri will be half of 120 that is 60 mm similarly outer radius that outer diameter is 240 mm this outer radius will be half of 240 that is 120 mm now the coefficient of friction mu is 0 0.25 and permissible intensity of pressure permissible pre intensity of pressure means pp is given pp is per, uh, is this p is for pressure this p is for pre permissible so permissible pressure is given which is 1.2 newton per mm means can i say if, uh, if we want our system should be safe that clutch should be safe actual maximum pressure either it should be equal to 1.2 or less than 1.2 because it is permissible pressure means pressure cannot be more than 1.2 okay so maximum pressure either maximum pressure should be equal to 1.2 or less than 1.2 to calculate limiting value you can equate maximum pressure with 1.2 now examiner is saying assume uniform wear theory means which theory we need to use uniform First, we have to calculate spring force at engaged position. Now, for plate clutch, formula to calculate spring force is, I am denoting spring force as W, and formula to calculate spring to by uniform wear theory is 2 pi C into R naught minus Ri. Okay. Now, Ri R naught is already given. So what is C? C is the product of P into R. Okay. Now here maximum pressure is given to, to calculate limiting value we equate P max with P may, permissible pressure. So maximum pressure is given which is 1.2 Newton per m square while calculating spring force W or torque in the expression we are uh, using unit force we are, we are putting force in Newton and dimensions is mm. 
means torque will come in newton mm because i am putting force in newton and dimensions in mm so here p max is given 1.2 newton per mm square and max pressure will be maximum at inner radius and here inner radius is 60 mm so if i will replace p by p max which is 1.2 so r will be, p will be maximum at inner radius and inner radius is 60 mm so from this expression we can calculate the value of c because maximum pressure will is given which is which will be at inner radius and c is coming 1.2 into 60 that is 72 newton per mm because it is newton per mm square and it is mm so c will come in newton per mm okay so so w will be 2 pi c and c is 72 into r naught r naught is 120 minus r i is 60 so from this expression we can calculate the value of w and it is coming 72 into 120 minus 60 that is 60 2 into it is coming 27143.36 so it is the expression of w 27143.37 and examiner is asking in newton and in Newton it has come 27143.3. Now second examiner is asking power transmitting capacity by the of the clutch at 750 rpm. So first we will calculate torque transmitted capacity. Now the expression to calculate torque transmitted capacity by the clutch is by uniform wear theory. Formula is mu w into mean radius, which is R naught plus R A divided by 2, because it is the expression of mean radius by uniform wear theory into number of pair of contacting surface but right now in this case number of pair of contacting surface is one so we will multiply this term with one now torque transmitted mu is already given coefficient of friction which is 0 0.25 w we have calculated is it is coming 27143.36 newton into r naught plus r i divided by 2 r naught is 120 plus r i is 60 divided by 2 so from this expression we can calculate torque and torque is coming torque is coming 120 plus 60 divided by 2 into 27143.36 into 0.25 it is coming you can check calculation 610725.6 newton mm if you will convert this in newton meter it will come divided by 1000 it is coming in newton meter it is coming 610.7256 now our objective is to calculate power transmitting capacity of the clutch and formula to calculate power is omega into torque here i will use si unit then power will come in watt and omega will be equal to says here speed is given in rpm speed is given in here speed is given in rpm in rpm the speed is 750 rpm so if you will convert a speed in rpm in radian per second it will be 2 pi n by 60 where n is speed in rpm which is 750 rpm divided by 60 so it is speed in radian per second into torque torque is 610.7256 so from this equation power will come in what power is coming after calculation it is coming 47966.27 watt okay now examiner is coming, asking power in kilowatt so if you will convert this in kilowatt it will be 47 0.966 kilo 47.966 okay so this is our first question now we'll discuss more questions now this is another question what examiner is saying in this question a plate clutch consists of one pair of contacting surface means again number of pair of contacting surface is one the inner and outer diameter of the friction disc are 100 mm and 200 mm inner diameter is 100 means inner radius will be 50 mm outer diameter is 200 means outer radius will be 100 mm now coefficient of friction is 0 0.25 Next, permissible intensity of pressure is 1 Newton per mm square. It is permissible intensity of pressure which is 1 Newton per mm square. Means actual maximum pressure either should be equal to this or less than this. To calculate limiting value, we will equate maximum pressure with 1. 
Okay, but actual maximum pressure either it should be equal to one or less than one. Now, assume uniform pressure theory. So, examiner is saying which theory we need to use? Uniform pressure theory. Okay, examiner asking spring force at engaged position and again power transmitting capacity at 750 rpm. Now, uniform pressure theory means pressure will remain constant over the entire surface. Now, to calculate limiting value, we will equate maximum pressure with permissible pressure, which is one newton per m square. But since we are using uniform pressure theory, so pressure will remain constant. So can I say here maximum pressure will be constant pressure because we are using pressure uniform pressure theory means pressure is constant but that constant pressure will be maximum pressure. Now first we have to calculate spring force at engaged position and what is the formula to calculate spring force for by uniform pressure theory formula is pi pressure into pi into r naught square minus r a square. Right now pressure is 1 newton per m square into pi into r naught square r naught is 100 square minus r i square which is 50. so from this equation we will get the value of spring force w and how much it is coming 100 square minus 50 square into 100 square 50 square into pi it is coming 23561.945 newton okay, so it is the value of w now we will calculate torque transmitted by the clutch to calculate power transmitting capacity okay now what will be the torque transmitting capacity of the clutch so formula to calculate torque transmitted by the clutch is by uniform pressure theory formula is mu w mu w into rm and for uniform pressure theory expression of rm is 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i cube upon r naught square minus r i square into number of pair of contacting surface and right now number of pair of contacting surface is only one so we will multiply this term with now 1 into mu is already given 0 0.25 w we have calculated 23561.945 into 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i cube r naught is 100 minus r i r i is 50 cube upon r naught square that is 100 square minus r i square that is 50 so from this equation we will calculate the torque transmitting capacity why it is torque transmitting capacity because we have uh, taken pressure equal to permissible pressure that's why it is torque transmitting capacity and how much it is coming after calculation it is coming 0.25 into 2. is coming you can check calculation 458148.93 newton mm now if we'll convert this again i'm checking calculation one more point two by three just be on safer side yes this expression is correct now if we will convert this in Newton meter it will be 458.14893 Newton meter. Now we can calculate power transmitting capacity of the clutch and formula to calculate power transmitted power transmitting capacity is omega into torque transmitting capacity. Now omega is speed in radian per second. Speed in rpm is given it is 750 rpm so if we will convert this speed into radian per second it will be 2 pi into 750 divided by 60 into torque torque transmitted capacity is 458.14893 from this we will get the expression of power transmitting capacity and it is coming it is coming it is coming 35982.93 watt if we will convert this in kilowatt, it will be equal to 35.982. Okay. So first examiner asking about spring force at engaged position, which which is coming 23561. 23561.945 Newton. Second, we have to calculate power transmitting capacity, which is coming 35.982. Examiner asking in kilowatt. 35.982. 
ओके आई विल डिस्कस सम मोर क्वेश्चन वाट दिस क्वेश्चन इज कहीं इन अ सिंगल प्लेट क्लच इनर एंड आउटर डायमीटर ऑफ फ्रिक्शन डिस्क आर टू हंड्रेड एम एम एंड फोर हंड्रेड इनर डायमीटर इज टू हंड्रेड सो इनर रेडियस विल बी हंड्रेड एम एम आउटर डायमीटर इज फोर हंड्रेड सो आउटर रेडियस विल बी टू हंड्रेड एम एम नाउ कोफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन दैट इज म्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट थ्री एंड द प्रेशर इंटेंसिटी ऑन द डिस्क इज गिवेन बाई पी इज इक्वल टू के आर टू दी पावर माइनस टू मीन्स पी इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज गिवेन के अपॉन आर स्क्वायर वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट लाइक दिस वेयर पी इज इन मेगा पासकल सो हेयर यूनिट इज गिवेन हेयर पी इज इन मेगा पासकल एंड टू कैलकुलेट प्रेशर पी इन मेगा पासकल वी नीड टू पुट वेयर वैल्यू ऑफ आर इन एम एम हेयर यूनिट इज मैं आर इन एम ओके मेगा पासकल इज मैथमेटिकली मेगा पासकल एंड न्यूटन एम पर एम एम स्क्वायर बोथ आर सेम यूनिट Miss here, can I say the unit for force is for the unit which is used for force is newton, and the unit which is for used for dimension is mm because it is newton per mm square. Here, here r is also coming in mm. So ultimately, through during calculation, we'll put uh, force in newton and dimension in mm. Now k is constant, so pre here pressure distribution is given. So we need not to assume any theory. Now, neither you will assume uniform pressure theory or nor uniform wear theory because here already pressure distribution is given. So we have to calculate torque transmitted by the clutch, and here we will calculate torque transmitted by, by the clutch by integration because here pressure distribution is given. So this question is very simple. But before that, here it in this distribution equation, a constant k is coming. So for to first we need to calculate the value of constant k. to calculate the value of constant k we need to know the pressure at any one point of this uh, distribution pressure distribution and here in question permissible pressure is given what is permissible pressure pp suppose i am denoting permissible pressure which is 1 mega pascal or 1 newton per mm square now since it is permissible pressure maximum pressure should either be equal to 1 or less than 1 now cal to calculate limiting value We will take maximum pressure equal to permissible pressure, which is one mega pascal. Now, where pressure will be maximum? Through this expression, you can conclude pressure is inversely proportional to R square. Means when R will increase, pressure will decrease. Means can I say pressure will be maximum at a uh, minimum value of R? And right now, minimum value of R is inner radius. So this pressure will be maximum at R equal to R I inner radius, and R I is hundred mm. So what will happen if in this expression, if we will replace P by P max, then we need to replace R by R I, and if we will put P equal to P max and R equal to R I, we will get the value of K constant K. So if we in this equation we will replace P by P max, which is one mega pascal, K by then we need to replace R by R I. R I is hundred mm. In this expression, we need to put R in mm, hundred square. So we will get the expression of K, and K is coming hundred in hundred, that is ten thousand. It is the expression of K. Now we'll put the value of K in this equation, so we'll get the distribution pressure distribution for the friction lining. And this expression is coming ten thousand. You can check calculation divided by R. Now since right we know the expression of pressure distribution, now we can calculate calculate easily calculate torque transmitted the by the clutch. And the expression will be through integration formula to calculate torque transmitted is mu into P into Two pi r square dr. It is very easy to remember. First, write the pressure force on strip, which will be p into two pi r dr into mu friction force into r friction torque, and we'll integrate this term from r i to r naught. It is the torque transmitted by one pair of contacting surface. Now we'll multiply this term with number of pair of contacting surface. We'll get total torque transmitted. But right now in equation, it is mentioned it is single plate clutch. And examiner has not mentioned whether it is one side effective, both side effective. So we'll assume one side is effective, and we'll take value of number of pair of contacting surface equal to one. We will multiply this equation by one by assuming one pair of contact. Now this will come integration R I to R naught. Q is constant, whose value is zero point three. Into pressure distribution is ten thousand divided by R square into two pi. R square and R I is hundred mm. R naught is now this is simple calculation. Since point three is constant, we can take point three outside. Ten thousand is constant. Two pi is also constant. 
apart from this uh, uh, r square and below side and above side r square is coming both will get cancelled means in, inside integration only dr will remain integration of dr is r if you will put upper limit it will come 200 minus if you will put lower limit it will come 100 this is simple calculation and ultimately we will get the value of torque transmitting capacity of this clutch and it is coming 200 minus 100 by 10,000 it is coming you can check calculation it is coming 1884955.592 newton mm okay it is torque transfer now examiner is asking torque transmitting capacity of the clutch in newton meter so we will convert this into newton meter and after converting it will come divide by 1000 it is coming 1884.955 so in newton meter torque transmitted by the clutch is 1884.95 this is another question what this question is saying a multi plate clutch consists of four steel plate and three bronze plate here material is given but by looking this number you can see which is uh, number of plate on driving shaft and which is number of plate on driven shaft in multi plate clutch number of plate on driven shaft i am denoting as n2 and number of plate on driving shaft i am denoting as n1 and n1 will be one more than n2 so here says number of plate steel plate are 4 and number of bronze plate are 3 means it is one more than uh, 4 is one more than 3 means can i say this four number is representing number of pair on driving side which i am denoting as n1 and this three number is representing number of plates on driven side which i am representing as 3 and since we know n1 n2 n2 we can calculate total number of pair of total number of pair of contacting surface and formula to calculate number of pair of contacting surface is n1 plus n2 minus 1 n1 is 4 plus n2 is 3 minus 1 it will come 4 plus 3 7 minus 1 6. now a disc clutch is required to transmit power of 30 kilowatt so power is given 30 kilowatt in what it will be 30 triple zero watt speed is given 2000 rpm since power and speed is given we can calculate torque now the disc has a friction lining with coefficient of friction coefficient of friction is given it is 0 0.25 bore radius of the friction lining is equal to bore radius means inner radius it is given that is ri is given it is 25 mm assume uniform contact pressure means uniform contact pressure means we need to use uniform pressure theory and the value of uniform pressure is given which is 1 mega pascal and in uniform pressure theory pressure is constant which i am denoting as p and p is given one mega pascal or one newton per minute okay now we have to calculate outer radius of the friction line since here power and since and speed is given first we will calculate torque transmitted by using power exp value of power and speed now since power is given power is equal to omega into torque power is 30 triple zero watt omega is speed in radian per second whose expression will be 2 pi into speed in rpm divided by 60 right now speed in rpm is 2000 divided by 60 into torque from this we will get the expression of torque it is coming by 2000 torque is coming 143 Point two three nine four five newton meter but in clutch while using the expression of torque we are putting force in newton dimension m in mm so we will convert this into newton mm and in newton mm it is coming 143239.45 now what is the uh, here uh, we have to calculate outer radius now torque transmitted we have calculated now what is the expression to calculate torque transmitted expression is by uniform pressure theory expression is mu w into mean radius and by uniform pressure theory mean radius is 2 by 3 r naught cube 
minus r i cube upon r naught square minus r i square. Now here we know the it is uh, expression of torque by one pair of contacting surface. So to calculate total transfer torque transmitted, we need to multiply this expression by number of pair of contacting surface, which I am denoting as small n. Now here torque we know, n we know, mu we know, r i we know. We need to calculate r naught, but w is not given in the question. Instead of w, pressure is given. So what we will do? We will uh, write the expression of w in terms of pressure. And by uniform pressure theory, the formula to calculate W is pressure P into pi into R naught square minus R A square. So what we'll do in this torque formula, we will replace W by this expression. So it will come in terms of pressure which is given in the question. The formula of torque will be, if we'll re replace W by this expression, formula will be N into mu W is pressure P into pi into r naught square minus r square and this r naught square minus r square will get cancelled with this r naught square minus r square so remain part will be 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r a cube now in this expression only unknown is r naught so we can easily calculate the value of r naught where torque transmitted is 143239 143239 0.45 equal to small n. Small n is number of pair of contacting surface which is 6 into mu. Mu is coefficient of friction which is 0 0.25 into p is value of constant pressure which is 1 newton per mm square into pi into 2 by 3 r naught cube minus r i is inner radius which is 12. From this first we will calculate the value of r naught cube minus r i cube. r i is 25 expression will come 143239.45 divided by 6 divided by 0.25 is coming 45594.53 from this if you will calculate the value of r naught it will come it is simple mathematics r naught is coming you can check calculation it is your part 39.412 it is the x value of r naught for this case that is outer radius of friction line and it is coming 39.412 okay now we'll discuss one more question uh, this question is homework for you uh, I will discuss one more question, but this question is homework for you. I am giving just hint. A multi plate clutch consists five steel plate and four bronze plate. Means number of pair of contacting surface on drive, sorry, number of plate on driving shaft is five and number of plate on driven shaft is four. So you can calculate number of pair of contacting surface which will be equal to five plus four minus one that is eight. Uh, inner diameter and outer diameter are given inner diameter is 100 so inner radius will be 50 mm outer diameter is 200 so outer radius will be 100 mm now coefficient of friction mu is given 0 0.1 intensity of pressure lining the intensity of pressure on friction line is limited to 0.3 newton per mm square this again permissible pressure is given which is 0.3 newton per mm square so actual maximum pressure either should be equal to this or less than this. To calculate limiting value, we equate friction pressure with this. Now we have to assume uniform wear theory and you need to calculate required force to engage the clutch means value of W and power transmitting capacity at this RPM. So since uh, wha uh, wha what we will do, we will equate maximum pressure with this and pressure will be maximum at inner radius and since uniform wear theory we have to use, you can calculate value of C which is P into R and when you will replace P by P max, R you will need to replace R by R A. So from this expression we can calculate the value of C and the formula to calculate W will be 2 pi C into R naught minus R I. You can calculate C from here, R naught R I is given. Now next power for calculator, calculate power transmitting capacity, first you need to calculate torque transmitting capacity. Formula to calculate torque transmitting capacity by uniform wear theory will be mu uh, number of pair of contacting surface that is N into mu W into R M for uniform wear theory R M is R naught plus R I divided by 2. R naught is given, R I is given. W you have already calculated, mu is given and number of pair of contacting surface we have already calculated. We will get the value of torque and through torque 
we can calculate power by using expression power equal to omega into torque and omega is speed in radian per second which we can calculate by using 2 pi into speed in rpm divided by 60 it is homework for you solve this question and post in the telegram group it is your part now i am discussing one more question it is one of the important point with respect to design point of view what this question is saying in a multiplate class the number of pair of contacting surface is small n which is fixed coefficient of friction is mu permissible pressure is pp per pressure cannot be more than permissible pressure so to calculate limiting value we equate by maximum pressure with permissible pressure due to space limitation outer radius is fixed which is equal to r not means when outer radius is fixed because outer radius will be fixed due to space limitation now examiner is asking what should be the inner radius of friction lining that is ri to have maximum torque transmitting capacity it is it is torque what will be the expression of inner radius to have to maximum torque transmitting capacity and the result which will come from this derivation you if you want you can remember that result because it is important okay because in sing, whether it is single plate clutch or multi plate clutch if due to space limitation r not is fixed because r not is in a not in our hand due to space limitation its value will get fixed but and for any fixed value of r not we can take value of ri by our will but it should be lesser than ri should be lesser than r not but we can take uh, any value of ri because space is limited for outer radius inner radius there is no limitation we can take ri less than r not okay now what value of ri we need to take in terms of r not to have maximum torque transmitted transmitting capacity that we have to calculate okay but here theory is not mentioned so before discussing this question i am explaining whenever in question in question which type of theory we need to use it is not mentioned then how we will decide for to solve this question whether we need to use uniform wear theory or uniform pressure theory so first i am explaining that uh when we will use uniform pressure theory or uniform wear theory you need to remember this point if in question it is mentioned that clutch is new then we will use uniform pressure theory. if in question it is mentioned that clutch is old then we will use uniform here nothing is mentioned if question mentioned that clutch is worn out worn out then also we will use uniform wear pressure theory sorry means for new clutch and worn out clutch uniform pressure theory for old clutch uniform wear theory if in question when it is mentioned that clutch is being used for power transmission used uniform wear theory and if nothing mentioned use uniform like here nothing is mentioned and whenever any question is coming for design and theory is not mentioned again we will use uniform wear theory means be better theory between uniform pressure theory or wear theory is uniform wear theory means if exam which theory to be used it is mentioned then use that theory if confusion is when uh, confusion is will create when it is not mentioned in the question which theory we need to use and if it is not mentioned for new clutch or worn out clutch uniform pressure theory for for old clutch uniform wear theory for design purpose uniform wear theory if nothing mentioned uniform wear theory so here it is less, uh, we have to calculate value of ri for which torque transmitting capacity will be maximum means it is the one of the question of design so here which theory we will use if it is not mentioned in the question from oh, here and since here theory is not mentioned therefore we will use now here we have to calculate value of ri for which torque transmitting capacity is maximum so first we will simplify the expression of torque transmitted uh, for you by uniform wear theory expression of torque transmitted is n into mu w into r not plus ri divided by 2 now here w will also come in terms of pressure because in w expression of w also ri will come and we have to find limiting value of ri for which torque transmitting will be maximum so what is the expression of w by uniform wear theory it is 2 pi c c into r not minus ri and expression of c is p max into ri because c is nothing but product of p into r which is constant for uniform wear theory and if p is p max r will be ri so a formula of c is p max into ri r not now for design purpose we will equate p max with permissible pressure which is given in the question permissible pressure is pp ri into r not minus r so if we we'll put this expression of w in this equation the expression of torque transmitted will be n into mu 
डब्ल्यू इज टू पाई परमिशिबल प्रेशर इन टू आर आई इन टू आर नॉट माइनस आर आई दिस हेयर आर नॉट माइनस आर आई इज कमिंग एंड इट इज आर नॉट प्लस आर आई तो आर नॉट माइनस आर आई इन टू आर नॉट प्लस आर आई दिस टर्म विल बी आर नॉट स्क्वायर माइनस आर आई स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई टू ना इफ विल ब्रिंग दिस आर आई इन साइड दिस ब्रेकेट विल बी इक्वल टू टॉर्क विल बी इक्वल टू एन इन टू म्यू दिस टू टू विल गेट कैंसल आई परमिशिबल प्रेशर एन म्यू पाई परमिशिबल प्रेशर दिस टू टू गेट रिंग कैंसल आर आई इज कमिंग वी आर ब्रिंगिंग आर आई इन साइड दिस ब्रेकेट सो इट विल बी आर नॉट स्क्वायर आर आई माइनस आर आई क्यू नाउ हियर दिस टर्म इज कॉन्स्टेंट If you want to find the value of R A for which torque transmitting capacity is maximum, for that we need to differentiate this torque expression by variable. And here variable is R A, so we'll differentiate this expression by R A, and we'll equate with this. G. Now only we need to differentiate this term, and since this term is constant, uh, and if we'll bring this constant term this side, this will become zero. Now differentiation of this term will be R not square R A. Here variable is R A, and in, here in power of R A one is coming, so its differentiation will be one. It will come R not square minus differentiation of R I cube will be three R I square equal to zero. From this equation, if you calculate R I, it will come R not divided by root three or zero point five seven seven R not. So if any fixed value of R not, if we'll take R I equal to R not divided by root three or point five seven seven root R not, for that this value of R I power transmitting capacity. Or torque transmitting capacity will be maximum by uniform wear theory. Means it is our optimum design for any fixed value of R not. So if you want, you can remember this. For any fixed value of R not, torque transmitting capacity. It is torque transmitting capacity. Torque transmitting capacity, or you can also say power transmitting capacity. Will be maximum for any fixed value of R not. It will be maximum when R I is equal to R not divided by root. You can also write R I is d I by two. If d I is inner diameter, R not is d not by two. This one by two and d not by two. One by two part of one d not by two will get cancelled. So d I will be equal to d not by. And in the, and if R I or d I is equal to this or this. The power torque tor transmitting capacity will be maximum as per uniform. Okay, so these are the some question related to single plate clutch, multi plate clutch. Okay, now when to use which theory that I have also discussed. When so type of theory is not mentioned in the question. Now sometime uh, one or two mark uh, one mark theoretical question can come between uh, single plate comparison of single plate clutch or multi plate clutch. So what is the difference? You can see uh, for same value of R not R I and W, torque transmitting capacity of multi plate clutch will be more as compared to single plate clutch. So can I say in single plate clutch less torque transmitting for same size, but here more torque transmitting capacity for same size because in, because in multi plate clutch in the torque formula n is multiply, and for single plate clutch n is either one or two. If one side is effective, it is one. Uh, if both side is effective, it is two. But for multi plate clutch, number of pair of continents that is n is more than two. That's why for same size of the clutch, torque transmitting capacity of multi plate clutch will be high. Why I have mentioned same size? Suppose for single suppose for single plate clutch, I am taking high value of R not as compared to multi plate clutch. Then it might be possible more torque will is transmitting for a single plate clutch. But for same size, torque transmitting capacity of multi plate clutch is high. Then we should also always use uh, multi plate clutch. But what is the problem? In multi plate clutch, since we are using multi plates, and here we are trans transmitting torque by friction, and friction will generate heat. And since in multi plate clutch we are using more plates, so can I say in multi plate clutch in less space, high heat will generate, and high gen heat generation is not good for the system. So what we need to do if high heat ge is generating temperature of the system is increase to reduce the system temperature of the system we need to apply coolant. That's why this clutch sometimes also known as weight clutch, or sometimes it might be possible coolant will also reduce some amount of coefficient of friction, because sometimes coolant is also act as lubrication. 
so it will reduce coefficient of friction if it is reducing coefficient of friction it will reduce the torque transmitting capacity of the clutch but in single plate clutch since heat is not generating in small space therefore air coolant is generally not required that's why sometimes single plate clutch is also known as dry okay so what is plus point for multi plate clutch for same size more torque transmitting capacity but where it is become negative point since le in less space high heat is generating here coolant is required that's why this clutch is also known as wet clutch means can i say if in any system in or in any additive mobile if the space is not limitation because if you use large size through single plate large size of clutch through single plate clutch also we can obtain high torque transmitting capacity means can i say when sp space is not a concern for us in that type of vehicle we can use single plate clutch because here in single plate clutch advantage here for adva plus point is we we, uh, we here coolant is not required but if space is limited then forcefully we need to use multi plate clutch because if space is limited with single plate clutch we cannot uh, obtain high torque transmitting capacity like speed is limited for automobile like bikes so generally in bikes we will use multi plate clutch but speed is not lim limited in big vehicle like buses cars so in that case we can use in big automobile we can use single so this is brief comparison between single plate clutch and multi plate clutch so we have completed the topic plate clutch now we will discuss cone clutch. so student now we will discuss cone clutch so it is the symmetric diagram of cone clutch now if you have understood plate clutch then cone clutch is also very simple for you only difference is in plate clutch this surface this contact ring surface were like this means can i say in plate clutch it is the longitudinal axis of the shaft so can i say in plate clutch the friction surfaces are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of shaft but here if you will see cone clutch so if i will extend this friction lining uh, surface along this direction so i'll explain this line you can see the angle of this line from longitudinal axis suppose i'm denoting this angle as alpha so if this angle is alpha this complete angle will be 2 alpha so suppose i'm denoting this angle as alpha so if this alpha is more than 0 but less than 90 means can i say for cone clutch alpha is between 0 to 90 degree. and for plate clutch you can say alpha is 90 degree so if alpha is 90 degree that is plate clutch if alpha is less than 90 degree then it is cone clutch and why it is uh, known as cone clutch because if you see the surface of this friction lining it is nothing but frustrum of cone that's why we have named this clutch as cone clutch now here this alpha if it is frustrum of cone then 2 alpha will be cone angle and if 2 alpha is cone angle can i say alpha is semi cone angle so here this alpha is nothing but semi cone angle so if in question cone angle is given then it is 2 alpha but if in question semi cone angle is given means alpha is given as per our notation okay now this angle is alpha now here this in uh, again this plate is connected to the driving shaft this plate is connected to the driven shaft which is spline shaft again under engaged position here this spring will be in compressed position due to which spring force will come in this direction same as single plate clutch one side effective case only difference is here this alpha is less than 90 in plate clutch it was 90 degree now due to this force w it will try to move this uh, inner cone or this plate which is engaged to driven shaft in this direction now this this plate is mounted on driven shaft which is spline shaft so this plate can move in this direction but due to due to this movement it will try to move this plate in this direction and this plate is connected to driving shaft which is not a spline shaft means this plate cannot move in this direction so what will happen this plate will apply pressure on this plate this is known as inner cone it is known as outer cone and due to this pressure will create between inner cone or outer cone or contact surface between inner cone and outer cone in this contact surface pressure will create due to pressure pressure force will come due to pressure force friction force will come and due to friction friction torque will come okay so it is the general working of this cone 
and when you will press this clutch pedal this plate will come in this direction and since it is spline shaft it is come in this direction and when it will come in this direction the there will be no contact between these two plates and no torque will transmit input and output and when you when you are not pressing this clutch pedal means under general condition this both plate will be in engaged position with this spring force term now what will be the expression of torque transmitted by the clutch in this case and expression of this spring force w that we have to calculate now again here pressure is coming across this friction lining and but here friction lining is like this and pressure is coming now now suppose to do the derivation again i am taking a strip of small strip in this friction lining suppose radial distance of this strip from central line is r now here if this distance is r but here we will not take the thickness of this strip equal to r why sir since r we have taken in radial direction so thickness of strip which is coming in radial direction that thickness we will denote as dr suppose suppose if a, a, any distance i am representing as x so thickness of strip in x direction i will represent as dx so since r is in radial direction so thickness of this strip this strip is not in radial direction the thickness of this strip which will come in radial direction so it is strip which projection in radial direction is this so this thickness we will represent as dr because it is coming in radial direction so whatever the notation i am talking taking for the thickness of strip but i will not denote this thickness as dr so suppose i am denoting the thickness of strip as dz thickness so thickness of strip is dz and projection of that strip in radial direction is dr now what will happen suppose to find the relation between dz and dr i am making zoomed view of this strip so if i will zoom this strip it will be like this its thickness is dz this angle will be alpha and the projection of this strip in radial direction is dr now from this triangle you can find the relation between dz and dr in this triangle if you will apply sin alpha it will be perpendicular that is dr upon hypo that is dz so dz will come dr upon sin alpha you can check this calc i am doing derivation but ultimately i ultimately i will summarize the formula of cohn class you need only you need to remember that summary so dz will be equal to dr upon sin alpha now what will be the expression of pressure force on strip first calculate all the parameter for strip now pressure force on strip since thickness of strip is constant we can assume that pressure in strip is constant pressure will come in normal direction so suppose pressure in strip at a normal distance r is p and we can assume pressure in strip is constant so if pressure at a distance r is small p pressure as a distance a distance r is small p then what will be the expression of pressure force on strip so first i am calculating pressure force on a strip the expression of pressure force on a strip will be suppose i am denoting this pressure force as dpn okay so it will be pressure into area of strip pressure is a small p at a distance r and area of strip will be radius is r so it will be 2 pi r into thickness of strip and what is actual thickness of the strip it is dz because this is strip so thickness of strip is dz so it is the expression of pressure force on a strip now suppose if i want to calculate the expression of torque transmitted by a strip so first we need to calculate friction force on a strip so pressure force will always come in normal direction so can i say it is normal force on a strip and since it is normal force on a strip what will be the expression of friction force on a strip so friction force on a strip okay dz is nothing but dr upon sin alpha so if you will simplify this it will be p into pi r and dz is nothing but dr upon now pressure friction force on strip will be mu into normal force mu where mu is coefficient of friction and normal force on strip is nothing but p into 2 pi r dz that is dr upon sin alpha now what will be the expression of torque transmitted by the strip suppose i am denoting torque transmitted by the strip as dt so torque transmitted will be friction force into radial distance of friction force from central line and friction force on strip is mu into p into 2 pi r 
डी आर अपॉन साइन अल्फा इन टू आर एंड आर इन टू दिस आर विल बिकम आर स्क्वायर इट इज वेरी इजी टू रिमेम्बर ओनली रिमेम्बर इन टॉर्क फॉर्मुला वन अपॉन साइन अल्फा इज विल कम ओके तो प्रेशर फोर्स ऑन स्ट्रिप पी इंटू टू पाई आर इंटू स्ट्रिप थिकनेस विच इज डी जेड विच इज डी आर अपॉन साइन अल्फा फ्रिक्शन फोर्स विल बी इन टू म्यू एंड फ्रिक्शन टॉर्क अगेन वी विल मल्टीप्लाई इंटू आर सो इट विल बिकम म्यू इंटू पी इंटू टू पाई आर स्क्वायर डी आर ओके हेयर आई एम राइटिंग वन मोर टर्म सपोज द प्रेशर फोर्स ऑन स्ट्रीम आई एम डोनोटिंग एज डी पी एन नाउ दिस डी पी एन विल कम इन नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन मीन्स इन दिस डायरेक्शन Now suppose if I will calculate angle of this term D P N, this this angle is alpha. So can I say here in this diagram this angle will be alpha? Why, sir? If angle between two line is alpha theta, then angle between their perpendicular lines will also be theta. Like here, angle between this line and horizontal is alpha. Now this normal force is perpendicular to this surface. and this is vertical means perpendicular to horizontal so angle between these two line is alpha means angle between their perpendicular will also be alpha and perpendicular of this line is this and perpendicular horizontal is this so this angle will also be alpha now if i will ask what is the vertical component oh, sorry what is the horizontal component of pressure force why i am calculating that i will explain later but i if i will ask what is the it is pressure force on strip what we what is the horizontal component of pressure force so horizontal component of pressure force on strip will come in this direction and this component will be dpn and since its angle from vertical is alpha so horizontal component will be sin alpha why i have calculated this i will explain okay i am not writing this separately here in this diagram i have shown it is the horizontal component of pressure force on strip now now our first objective is to calculate a spring force at engaged position which is w now how we will calculate this spring force is coming in horizontal direction in the uh, horizon, uh, horizontal direction and in this direction now this spring force will balance by pressure which is created on the friction lining because this pressure is coming on the friction lining due to this spring force now what will happen but pressure force is pressure is coming in this direction so what we need to calculate since w is coming in this direction so what we will do we will calculate total pressure force or can we can can i say we will calculate total component of pressure force in this direction which will be balanced by w so to calculate w expression of w expression of w will be equal to w is coming in this direction and net force in axial direction or this direction is zero so w is coming in this direction which will be balanced by the component of pressure force which will come in this direction and how we will calculate total component of pressure force which will come in this direction for that first we will calculate component of pressure force on strip in this direction now integrate this term it is component of pressure force in axial direction it is the component of pressure force in axial direction for strip now if we will integrate this term for entire friction lining then we will get, get, get the total component of pressure force in axial direction which will be balanced by w so expression of w will be total component of pressure force in, in axial direction to calculate that first calculate pressure force on strip in axial direction and pressure force on strip in axial direction is nothing but dpn sin alpha it is pressure force on component of pressure force it is not pressure force on strip it is component of pressure force on strip in axial direction and if we'll integrate this term for entire friction lining it will be total component of pressure force in, in the axial direction which will be balanced by w means if we'll integrate this term for entire friction lining it will be it will give the expression of w now if we'll simplify this term it will come ri to r not dpn dpn is nothing but p into 2 pi r dpn is pressure force on strip whose expression is p into 2 pi r into strip thickness that is dr upon sin alpha and here one sin alpha is coming in above side so this above sin alpha below sin alpha will get cancel means expression of w will be integration ri to r not p into 2 pi r dr here one interesting result is coming we have already studied plate clutch in plate clutch the formula of w was integration p into 2 pi r dr the same expression is also coming here means can i say uh, expression of w will not depend upon 
एंगल अल्फा मीन्स हेयर इन कौन क्लच एंगल अल्फा इज कमिंग बट इन द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ डब्ल्यू नो अल्फा विल कम यू कैन रिमेंबर दिस ओके मीन्स फॉर प्लेट क्लच द डब्ल्यू फॉर्मुला वाज इंटीग्रेशन आर आई टू आर नॉट इन टू पी इन टू टू बाई आर डी आर फॉर कौन क्लच ऑल्सो द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ डब्ल्यू इज कमिंग सेम एक्सप्रेशन इंटीग्रेशन पी इन टू टू बाई आर डी आर बाई आर डी आर मीन्स द फॉर्मुला विच इज कमिंग फॉर टू कैलकुलेट स्प्रिंग फोर्स फॉर प्लेट प्लेट क्लच सेम फॉर्मुला विल बी वैलिड टू कैलकुलेट स्प्रिंग फोर्स फॉर कौन क्लच दिस इज इम्पोर्ट ओके नाउ सेम एज प्लेट क्लच नाउ बट वाट विल बी द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ टोटल टॉर्क ट्रांसमिटेड इट विल बी इंटीग्रेशन आर आई टू आर नोट टॉर्क ट्रांसमिटेड बाई स्ट्रिप एंड टॉर्क ट्रांसमिटेड बाई स्ट्रिप इज म्यू इन टू पी इन टू टू पाई आर स्क्वायर डी आर अपॉन साइन अल्फा मीन्स अल्फा एंड हाउ यू कैन राइट दिस एक्सप्रेशन प्रेशर फोर्स इन स्ट्रिप पी इन टू टू पाई आर डी जे डी जेड इज डी आर अपॉन साइन अल्फा फ्रिक्शन फोर्स इन टू म्यू टॉर्क अगेन वील मल्टीप्लाई विथ आर नाउ is this expression is coming same as plate clutch no the formula to calculate torque transmitted in plate clutch was when one number of pair of contacting surface is involved why i am saying one pair of contacting surface because in cone clutch always one pair of contacting surface will be involved because through this diagram you cannot make a diagram like this that more than one pair of contacting surface are possible through this cone clutch only one pair of contacting surface is possible so formula to calculate torque when one pair of containing surface is involved in plate clutch the formula is integration r i to r not mu into p into 2 pi r square dr but here along with that term 1 upon sin alpha is also coming so if we'll differentiate this formula with respect to plate clutch can i say the expression of w is same as plate clutch and in the expression of w the uh, torque in whatever the expression of torque transmitted for plate clutch in that expression we need to apply, multiply 1 upon sin alpha to calculate the express to find the expression of torque transmitted by cone clutch means expression of w is same as plate clutch and expression of torque is equal to expression of torque for plate clutch into 1 upon sin alpha can i say this is the conclusion for cone clutch expression of w is same as same as plate clutch okay now expression of torque transmitted is torque transmitted by plate clutch expression of torque transmitted by plate clutch that is in, if, if you will write in terms of integration integration r to r not mu into p into 2 pi r square dr uh, in, oh, into into 1 upon this is the difference now if if you if you understood this conclusion you can easily simply summarize this expression for uniform pressure theory now if i will write the expression of w for uniform pressure theory same as plate clutch the formula of w uh, for plate clutch is pressure p for by uniform pressure theory formula is pressure p into pi into r not square minus r square same formula of w will be valid for cone clutch also by uniform now expression of torque first write the to expression of torque transmitted by plate clutch then multiply this with uh, that term with 1 upon sin alpha now by uniform pressure theory formula to calculate torque transmitted by plate clutch is mu w into mean radius and mean radius by uniform pressure theory is 2 by 3 r not cube minus r a cube upon r not square minus r a square now we will multiply this term by 1 upon sin it is the expression of torque transmitted by cone clutch similarly if you will summarize this for uniform wear theory uniform wear theory means product of p into r will be constant which i am denoting as c and to if maximum pressure is given in the question pressure will be maximum at inner radius so we can calculate c by using expression p max into ra because p max into ra is constant which is c now what is the expression of w for uniform wear theory in plate clutch the expression is 2 pi c r not minus ra same expression of w is valid for cone clutch because in cone clutch expression of w is same as plate clutch now for torque transmitted first write the expression of torque transmitted for plate clutch then multiply that term with 1 upon sin alpha now by uniform wear theory expression of torque transmitted for plate clutch is mu w into mean radius by uniform wear theory mean wear radius is r not plus ri divided by 2 now to find the expression of torque transmitted by cone clutch we will multiply this term by 1 upon so it is the general conclusion of cone now in cone clutch uh, what is positive point 
if we are using single plate clutch with same size and with num one pair of quantitating surface then can i say and we are using cone clutch with same size and in cone clutch also number of pair of quantitating surface will be one so can i conclude for same spring force torque transmitting capacity of cone clutch will be more why because here in this expression 1 upon self as sin alpha is getting multiplied sin alpha will be less than 1 means 1 upon sin alpha will be greater than 1 so its torque transmitting capacity for same size for same number of pair contacting surface will be greater than plate clutch but here it is not a major advantage point why because here multi plate clutch is not possible but in single plate clutch with multi by, by using multi plates we can obtain high torque transmitting high torque transmitting capacity and here uh, you can say uh, since due to this one upon sin alpha its torque transmitting capacity is more, will be more so by taking less value of alpha we can obtain high torque transmitting capacity so you can say take alpha equal to 0 so one upon sin 0 is 0 one upon 0 torque transmitting capacity will be infinite but we cannot take alpha equal to 0 because here objective is not of clutch is not only to transmit torque from input to output at engaged position it's also uh, one of the uh, one objective is also whenever we want we should able to disengage the clutch and whenever we want we should able to engage the clutch and if we are taking alpha value very less there will be chances of locking of clutch in that case because 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 imagine if alpha is very less it is zero so these surfaces will be like this when we will try to disengage this clutch this friction will not allow to disengage because when we will try to disengage means you will try to move in this direction so friction force will come in this direction which will will which will restrict the disengagement of this clutch means here we cannot take very less value of alpha because if we will take alpha very less for that in that case if we will take alpha very less in that case clutch will get self locked means engagement and disengagement will not be smooth in that case what we can do for to ensure that alpha uh, self locking is not occurring we need to take value of alpha more than some particular value or some particular limit and that particular limit is friction angle means to ensure avoid this self locking to avoid self locking self lock self locking can i say value of alpha should be more than friction angle that is tan inverse mu to is coefficient of it or equal to this okay from this if you will find the expression of mu you can say mu should be less than equal to tan alpha alpha should be more means mu should be less so mu should be less than equal to tan alpha to avoid self lock you can remember here alpha is semi cone angle okay and alpha should be more than tan inverse mu or mu should be less than tan alpha to avoid self -locking. okay and if we are taking alpha by ensuring this equation then there will be no self locking and in a cold clutch it is the for formula to calculate w same as plate clutch it is the formula to calculate torque it this expression is expression of torque by plate clutch into one upon sine. In this way, you can remember this relation. Now I will solve some problem related to cone clutch. This is one question. What this question is saying? It is MSQ means one more than one option can be correct. Here, a cone clutch has semi cone angle. Semi cone angle means alpha is given, which is twenty degree. Coefficient of friction that is mu is given, which is zero point two five. Spring enters the axial force of 8000 Newton. So here directly axial force W is given, which is 8000. The outer and minor diameter are given. Outer diameter is 300 mm. If outer diameter is 300 mm, outer radius will be half of 300, that is 150 mm. Inner diameter is 150 mm. If inner diameter is 150, inner radius will be half of 150, that is 75 mm. Which one or more of the following options are correct? Okay, so we have in option A is asking torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory. In option B, also uniform pressure theory. So out of A and B, either one will be A will be correct or B will be correct or both will be incorrect. Okay, uh, in A and B, we have to calculate torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory. 
similarly in option c and d examiner asking torque transmitted by uniform wear means ultimately we have to calculate torque transmitted by both first by uniform pressure theory then by uniform wear okay so first i am calculating torque transmitted by this cone clutch by uniform pressure theory now what is the expression to calculate torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory first write the expression of torque transmitted for multiplet clutch then multiply that term with 1 upon sin alpha so if you will write the expression of torque transmitted by plate clutch for uniform pressure theory expression is mu w into rm and rm mean radius for by uniform pressure theory is 2 by 3 r not cube minus r a cube upon r not square minus r square now we will multiply this term with 1 upon now here mu is given w is given r not gives in r na is given and alpha is given so you can, we can calculate torque transmitted by using this expression because all values are given mu is 0.25 w is 8000 newton into rm 2 by 3 r not cube r not is 150 ra is 75 150 cube minus 75 cube upon 150 square minus 75 into 1 upon sin alpha and alpha is 20 degree so from this expression we can calculate torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory and how much it is coming it is coming 2 by 3 into 150 cube minus 75 cube divided by square minus square divided by sin alpha 8000 it is coming 682221.027 newton mm and if we'll convert this in newton meter it will come divided by 1000 in newton meter it is coming 682.221 meter okay so torque transmitted by this clutch by uniform pressure theory is 682.22 which option is correct out of a and b because in a and b examiner is asking torque transmitted by uniform pressure theory it is b is correct because by uniform pressure theory torque transmitted is 682.22 okay means option a is in now in so out of a and b b is correct now in c and d examiner is asking torque transmitted by uniform wear theory so now we will calculate torque transmitted by uniform wear now expression of torque transmitted by uniform theory wear theory first write the expression of torque transmitted by uniform wear theory by for plate clutch then multiply that expression by 1 upon sin alpha for plate clutch for expression of torque transmitted for uniform wear theory is u w into mean radius and for uniform wear theory expression of mean radius is r not plus r a divided by 2 now we will multiply this term with 1 upon u is 0.25 w is 8000 newton R not is 150 plus R I, which is 75, divided by 2 into 1 upon sine alpha. Alpha is 20. so. From this equation, we can calculate torque transmitted by this clutch by uniform wear theory. How much it is coming? It is coming 657856 newton mm we will convert this in newton meter it will be 657.857 or 856 newton meter so torque transmitted by uniform wear theory is 657.856 newton meter which option is correct option d c is in okay here option b is correct and option b c is also okay so we have completed cone clutch now we will discuss next clutch or last clutch that is centrifugal okay so student now we will discuss centrifugal clutch in centrifugal clutch its operation is not like plate clutch or cone clutch in plate clutch or cone clutch whenever we want we can disengage the clutch by pressing the clutch pedal and in general condition it will be in engaged position engaged position but this thing is not valid for centrifugal clutch you can say uh, i will explain its working but centrifugal clutch is a uh, automatic clutch you can treat it as auto automatic clutch means what may i meant to say here it will not operate at the will of operator 
means whenever we want to disengage the clutch we cannot do that in centrifugal clutch means what is the basic operation of centrifugal clutch suppose i am referring any speed as omega 1 which is the speed of driving shaft i am taking omega in radian 1 and radian per second now what is omega 1 if speed of driving shaft is less than that particular speed which is omega 1 how to calculate omega 1 that i will explain if speed of actual speed of driving shaft suppose i am representing actual speed as omega so if actual speed of driving shaft that is omega is less than omega 1 then driving shaft and driven shaft will not be connected with each other means they will be at disengaged position but if actual speed of driving shaft that is omega is more than omega 1 then clutch will be in engaged position means driving shaft and driven shaft will be in, in engaged position means it will not operate at the will of operator if omega is less than omega 1 that position will at that case uh, it will be disengaged position if omega is more than omega 1 in that case there will be engaged position this power or at the end power and torque will transmit from input shaft to output shaft means in centrifugal clutch uh, suppose i am referring any speed as omega 1 what is this speed then i is uh, speed omega 1 is that speed if actual speed will become will go beyond omega 1 input and output shaft will be in engaged position that is speed i am representing is o, as omega 1 how to calculate omega 1 that i will explain but if actual speed omega is less than omega 1 that will be the case in which clutch will be in disengaged position means no torque will transmit from input to but when actual speed omega is more than omega 1 clutch will be in and it will work automatically now it is the basic diagram or construction of centrifugal this is our driving shaft in this view this is driving shaft this is driving shaft now in this driving shaft springs are attached to this spring uh, this uh, spider or shoe is attached in uh, above side of shoe friction lining is attached okay now this is our driven shaft or output shaft and in this driven shaft this drum is rotated it, it attached means dr this drum is the part of driven shaft means if this friction lining is engaged with drum means input shaft is engaged with driven shaft so this drum ultimately this portion is connected to driving shaft and this drum is ultimately engaged with this is known as drum and this drum is connected to driven shaft now what will happen okay uh, right now this is disengaged representing disengaged position disengaged position means definitely omega is less than omega 1 now what will happen when the speed of this driving shaft will increase this spring will elongate and if spring is elongate elongating it will uh, the gap between this is uh, friction lining and drum will reduce one instant will come or one speed will come when the gap between this friction lining and drum will be zero and after that speed if you will increase the speed then also spring want to elongate because uh, because if you will increase the speed centrifugal force will increase due to if centrifugal force is increasing centrifugal force will always act in outward direction due to that spring force uh, due to that centrifugal force it will try to elongate the spring but it can only elongate the spring up to this point because after that drum will uh, restrict the motion of this friction lining so what will happen if speed omega uh, will be beyond omega 1 so what will happen at omega 1 this friction lining will just touch this drum after that spring cannot uh, elongate further so what will happen if you will increase the speed beyond that value at which friction lining is just touching the drum after that increasing the speed means centrifugal force will increase it will try to elongate the spring further but spring will not elongate further due to the restriction of drum means the after touching this if you will increase the speed this friction lining will try to move in upward direction due to the centrifugal force but the this drum will restrict the path of this movement due to which pressure will create between drum and friction lining and torque will transmit from input to output shaft but these things occurs after speed omega 1 because at omega 1 speed this friction lining will just touch the drum
बट बिफोर ए स्पीड ओमेगा वन देर विल बी नो कॉन्टेक्ट बिटवीन फ्रिक्शन लाइनिंग एंड ड्रम मीन्स देर विल बी नो इंगेजमेंट बिटवीन फ्रिक्शन लाइनिंग एंड ड्रम एंड नो टॉर्क विल ट्रांसमिट फ्रॉम इनपुट सो आउटपुट अगेन आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस फॉर टू एक्सप्लेन दिस आई एम मेकिंग दिस व्यू ओके दिस इज नो हेयर इन दिस डायग्राम राइट नाउ देर इज नो फोर नंबर ऑफ शू बट टू एक्सप्लेन इज वर्किंग इन दिस डायग्राम आई ओनली आई एम टेकिंग वन शू टू एक्सप्लेन इज वर्किंग राइट नाउ दिस इज फ्रिक्शन लाइनिंग देर इज गैप बिटवीन फ्रिक्शन लाइनिंग एंड ड्रम मीन्स एट दिस पोजिशन द स्पीड राइट नाउ दिस स्पीड इज लेस देन ओमेगा वन नाउ वाट विल हैपन वेन द स्पीड इज लेस देन ओमेगा वन इन दैट रेज इफ वील इंक्रीज द स्पीड ऑफ ड्राइविंग साफ्ट because slightly slowly gradually we will increase the driving shaft and what we want when speed will go beyond omega 1 this uh, shoe or friction lining should get engaged with this drum but right now since speed is less than omega 1 that way they will be in disengaged position now what will happen if we increase the omega definitely centrifugal force will increase the formula to calculate centrifugal force is m r omega square where m is mass of this shoe suppose i am representing mass of each shoe as small m so what is small m mass of is to only understand this concept okay after that i will summarize all the discussion so uh, small is m is mass of its shoe now due to this mass and speed centrifugal force will come in outward direction whose expression will be mr omega square now this a uh, centrifugal force will try to elongate the spring right now there is gap between uh, spring uh, friction lining and drum so due to this centrifugal force it will increase it will elongate and if still omega is less than omega 1 it will elongate but it will not touch the inner surface of drum okay so suppose it is elongate up to some point at at that position uh, centrifugal force is mr omega square and due to the elongation of spring spring force will come in this direction suppose spring force is fs and and this spring force will balance this centrifugal force okay and this uh, the means ultimately conclusion is due to the centri uh, if uh, we are increasing the speed centrifugal force will increase due to that centrifugal force is spring want to elongate and if a spring is elongating freely is freely means if a spring is, this friction lining is not touching till the instant when uh, when friction lining is not touching drum till that instant spring will elongate uh, freely and due to the spring elongation of spring the spring force will balance this centrifugal force okay so right now with when omega is less than omega 1 in that case the centrifugal force will get balanced by spring force because uh, because if, if speed omega is less than omega 1 uh, spring will not try to uh, if spring has not touched this drum not touch this drum means Uh, means this centrifugal force will get balanced by spring force because spring has elongated freely due to this centrifugal force. it is same like if in this spring and if you will attach one weight to w due to this w this spring will try to elongate in downward direction and it will elong right and right now spring can elongate freely like in this case when spring friction lining is not touching in the the drum spring can elongate freely now up to what point it will elongate up to that point when this spring force uh, will get balanced by the weight w means when w is equal to k delta up to that point spring will elongate so similarly till the point when spring is elongating freely this spring force will get balanced by centrifugal force because here elongation of spring is occurring due to centrifugal force similarly uh, omega is increase 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 or suppose we have reached omega equal to omega 1 what will happen when it is omega equal to 1 omega 1 what will happen when omega will become o equal to omega 1 at that instant this uh, friction lining will just touch the inner surface of drum just touch means up to this point also a spring has in is elongate spring has elongated freely up to this point when when omega has reached omega 1 and inner surface of friction sorry friction lining has just touched the inner surface of drum means if you will increase speed further means this friction lining will try to uh, this this shoe will try to uh, go in this direction means this spring will try to elongate but after that speed drum will not allow to elongate the spring but till this point also spring has elongated freely
but at this point exactly is this friction lining has just touched the drum means the what is this position omega equal to omega 1 at this position friction lining friction lining is just touching the inner surface of drum means at this position also spring has uh, elongated freely but after that speed spring now cannot uh, now spring cannot elongate further because it will be restricted by this drum because right now this friction lining has just touched the drum but at this speed since friction lining has just touched the drum means can i say at this position although friction lining has touched the drum but they but at this position spring uh, centrifugal force will get balanced by a spring force why because till this position till this speed also spring has uh, elongated freely so this position is known as just engaged position just engaged what is just engaged position it is the position when omega is equal to omega 1 or it is the position when friction lining is just touching the drum just touching the drum means now spring cannot elongate further first conclusion and second conclusion is at that position a spring force will be balanced sorry centrifugal force will be balanced by a spring force because at just engaged position also a spring has elongated freely means there is two point is important at just after reaching at just po engaged position to conclusion is a spring cannot uh, cannot elongate further because friction lining has just touched the drum and since at this position friction lining is ju has just touched the drum means at this position also spring has elongated freely means at that position also means at just engaged position also centrifugal force will be balanced by spring force now suppose centrif uh, sub centrifugal force of this just engaged position i am denoting as fc1 because for just engaged position i am using suffix 1 and spring force of just engaged position i am denoting as fs1 means at just engaged position fc1 will be equal to fs1 fs1 is a spring force at just engaged position that will be balanced by centrifugal force because at just engaged position also a spring has uh, elongated freely but after that a spring now cannot elongate because it has ju just touched the drum now what will be the expression of centrifugal force centrifugal force is mr omega square where m is mass and i have denoted mass of is as small as now what is r r is radius of center of gravity and omega is speed so right now at this position at just engaged position radius of center of gravity i am denoting as rg so first i am writing rg what is rg rg is radius of center of gravity at engaged position why i am saying engaged position it is just engaged but can i say for all engaged position value of rg will be fixed why it will be fixed because after this speed this shoe cannot move further or this spring cannot elongate further and after this speed all position are engaged position so after this spring since this spring cannot elongate further means this position of g is fixed means for all engaged position value of rg will be fixed so can i say what is rg i am writing rg rg is radius of center of gravity rg is radius of center of gravity at engaged position because at all engaged position rg value of rg will be fixed and right now at just uh, speed is omega 1 which is just engaged speed so expression of centrifugal force will be mrg omega 1 square 
and it and it is ba getting balanced by say, say spring force why it is getting balanced because at this position although friction lining has touched the drum but it is it has just touched the drum just touched the drum means till this position also spring has elongated freely and if spring has elongated freely means spring force will get balanced by centrifugal force so this fc1 is mrg omega 1 square which is centrifugal force of just engaged position which is getting balanced by and spring force fs1 is spring force at just engaged position now now i am coming to this position at this position omega is greater than omega 1 and if omega is greater than omega 1 it will be engaged position and it is forcefully engaged position why it forcefully it is also engaged position but it is just engaged just engaged means here no in this contact surface no net force is coming because fc1 is getting balanced by fs1 and since no net force is coming no pressure will come between this because although it, this friction lining has touched this drum but here this friction lining is not trying to uh, move further and at omega equal to omega 1 because it has just touched the drum and since it is not trying to move further means no pressure will come between this and no pressure means no uh, normal force no normal force must be no friction force means no torque it's at just engaged position although it is touching the drum but no torque tra will transmit from input to output side. but what will happen when speed will go uh, speed of driving shaft will go beyond omega 1 what will happen here do, since speed has increased means centrifugal force will increase so at this position suppose i am say, representing centrifugal force is fc and it's if omega is greater than omega 1 centrifugal expression of centrifugal force will be m rg why rg because now centrifugal force is increasing means now spring will try to elongate further but just since this friction lining has touched the drum means now it is it is trying to elongate further but it cannot elongate because it will be restricted by this drum and since this shoe cannot move further means position of this g will be fixed for engaged position means again radius of rise red center of gravity of shoe will remain equal to rg means at all engaged position whether it is just engaged or general engaged position when omega is greater than omega 1 value of rg will be fixed that's why here i have written rg into omega square and can i say this centrifugal force will be more than fc1 is centrifugal force of just engaged position so here centrifugal force is increasing which will try to is elongate the spring further but now spring cannot elongate further suppose i am denoting the spring force of this position by fs okay now centrifugal force has increased means it will try to elongate the spring further it is 100% too but now spring in cannot elongate further because the motion of the, the motion of the mo this wants to go in this direction this due to, to centrifugal force but this motion of shoe is getting restricted by this drum means spring want to el wants to increase elongate further but it cannot elongate due to the restriction by drum and since now spring cannot elongate further means can i say spring force of this engaged position will be same as spring force of just engaged position that is fs1 means here fs will be same as fs1 why same as fs1 because here fs1 is a spring force of this position after this position when omega is equal to omega 1 after if you will increase the omega a spring wants to elongate further but it cannot elongate means can i say whatever the elongation of spring at this position suppose at this position elongation of spring is delta 1 so at this position also spring elongation of spring will be delta 1 because it will it wants to elongate further but it cannot means here elongation is delta 1 means here also elongation is delta 1 and suppose a stiffness of spring is k so here spring force will be k delta 1 and here a stiffness of spring is k and again here the flexion of spring is, rema is is remaining same that is delta 1 because although spring wants to increase el elongate further but it cannot elongate means here also in this position also elongation of spring is delta 1 so spring force will be k delta 1 is same as this is sa same as so can i say a spring force of all engaged position will be same okay okay so in this case fc1 was same as fs but here fc has increased which is more than fs fc1 and here fc1 and fs1 was same 
and here fs1 is same as fs and fs1 is nothing but it mathematically it is equal to fc1 means can i and since fc is more than fc1 can i say it this engaged position when omega is more than omega 1 centrifugal force will be more than spring force because spring force at all engaged position is same which is equal to this and this is equal to fc1 but centrifugal force is more than fc1 more than fc1 means more than fs1 more than fs1 means more than fs means can i say at this in this uh, contact surface net outward force will become which is equal to fc minus fs fc where fc is centrifugal force of engaged position whose expression is m r g omega square and fs is spring force of uh, of engaged position or can i say spring force of all engaged position will be same because at engaged position spring cannot elongate further but means spring force will remain same so here one important conclusion is coming spring force that is fs spring force all of all engaged position i am not talking about disengaged position of all engaged position will be same it is one most important line will be same and that will be equal to spring force whether it is just engaged position or engaged position spring force will be remain same whether you denote is as fs or fs1 and that will be equal to can i say it will be equal to centrifugal force centrifugal force of just engaged position why because centrifugal force at just engaged position is getting balanced by spring force and spring force of all engaged position is constant which is equal to centrifugal force of just engaged position and i am denoting centrifugal force of just engaged position as fc1 so can i say fs is equal to fc1 and formula to calculate fc1 is m r g omega through this expression if spring force of engaged position is given so through this expression we can calculate the speed at which engagement will start means actually speed is less than omega 1 then there will be no engagement if actually speed is more than omega 1 there will be engagement okay so through this expression we can calculate the speed at which engagement is start and even question already omega 1 is given you can calculate fc1 and then you can calculate spring force of all engaged okay so spring force of all engaged position is same which is centrifugal force at just engaged position formula is this now if actually speed is more than omega 1 then actual centrifugal force whose formula will be m r g omega square will be more than spring force so can i say here net normal force will come and that normal force in this friction lining will be equal to fc centrifugal force whose expression is m r g omega square minus spring force and spring force is a uh, spring force of all engaged position is same which is equal to a uh, centrifugal force of just engaged position okay now due to this net normal force friction force will come in this friction lining and friction force will be equal to mu into normal force that is mu into fc minus f due to this friction force friction torque will come and torque suppose i am denoting torque as capital t okay so what will be the expression of torque friction force mu into fc minus fs and this friction force will come at this point okay and perpendicular to fc means in uh, normal force in means in this direction now torque will be distance of this point from say, uh, uh, axis of rotation and distance of this point from axis of rotation will be equal to rd because this point is coming at the inner surface of drum and rd is nothing but inner radius of drum so definitely examiner will give value of rd i am writing here what is rd rd is inner radius of drum rd is inner radius of drum so rd is inner radius of drum so torque transmitted will be mu into net force fc minus fs into inner radius of drum but it is torque transmitted by one shoe but in centrifugal clutch we are using more than one shoe 
so we will multiply this term with number of shoe which i am denoting as z what is z in this expression what is z in this expression z is nothing but number of it is the expression to calculate total torque transmitted at engage engage position means this expression is valid when omega is more than omega 1 because when omega is om less than omega 1 that position will be disengaged this in this engage no torque will transfer so definitely examiner will give either spring force of all engaged position or speed at which engagement is starting that is omega 1 now if actual speed is less than omega 1 means no engagement if actual speed is more than omega 1 then there will be engagement and at engaged position it is the expression to calculate torque transfer but you need not to remember this like this how you can remember this at engaged position centrifugal force is fc spring force is fs and spring force of all engaged position will be constant which will be equal to centrifugal force of just engaged position that is fc1 and fc1 is mrg omega 1 square now net force at engaged position will be fc minus fs so friction force into mu torque into rd total torque in into for to calculate total torque will be multiplied this term with number of shoes that is z so it is the expression of torque term. now here uh, if i will write what is omega 1 all things i have explained already what is omega 1 omega n is not actually speed omega 1 is speed in radian per second at which engagement starts or you can also say omega 1 is the speed at just engaged position and omega is actual speed now if i will summarize all the discussion all this discussion of centrifugal clutch conclusion is if omega is less than omega 1 there will be no engagement no engagement means no torque will transfer okay now when omega is equal to omega 1 this position is known as just engaged position okay. when omega is more than omega 1 that position is known as engaged position Now to conclude whether position is engaged, disengaged or just engaged, we need to know the value of omega and how to calculate omega 1. For that important point is, uh, a spring force of all position will be, all engaged position will be constant, all engaged, all engaged position and that is spring force I am representing as Fs, uh, where Fs is spring force of all engaged position and a spring force of all engaged position will be equal to centrifugal force at just engaged position that is fc1 and fc1 is nothing but m r g omega 1 square so spring force is given then you from this equation you can calculate omega 1 now if actually speed is less than omega 1 means no engaged position and no engagement means no torque will transmit if actual speed is equal to omega 1 then it is just engaged position in just engaged position also no torque will transmit but if actual speed is more than omega 1 then torque will transmit and how we will calculate torque transmitted for that we need to calculate actual centrifugal force which is fc and formula to calculate fc is m r g omega square or actually spring force at engaged position is fs because it is constant for all position and is all engaged position and spring force of all engaged position is equal to nothing but is centrifugal force at just engaged position so spring if a spring force at of all engaged position is not given then definitely examiner will give the value of omega 1 means speed at which engagement starts by using omega you can calculate fc1 and fc1 will be equal to fs which is in force of all engaged position now if actually speed is that is omega is greater than omega 1 that definitely fc will come more than fs and if fc is coming more than fs so what will be net uh, expression of net pressure force on friction lining net pressure force will be fc minus fs then what will be the expression of friction force i am directly writing the expression of torque how to write net pressure force is fc minus fs then friction force will be mu into mu friction torque into rd and total torque multiply this with number of so this is the summary of centrifugal class okay
So there is somebody you can easily solve the questions of centrifugal clutch. And I will suggest one important point while solving the problem of centrifugal clutch, always use SI unit. Don't use any other unit, only you always use SI unit. That is force in Newton, distance in meter. Okay. So in that case, you will not make any mistake related to unit in center. We are solving discussing one question related to the centrifugal clutch. What question is saying? A centrifugal clutch consists four number of shoes. So here number of shoes are each having a mass of two kg. So what is mass of each shoe? It is small m which is two. In the engaged position, the radius of center of gravity of each shoe is 120 mm. And we already know the radius of center of gravity of all engaged position will be same. And that value is given, that is RG is given, which is 120 mm. In SI unit, that in meter, it will be 0 0.12 meter. While the inner radius of drum is 150 mm. Inner radius of drum means RD, it is 150 mm, means in meter, it will be 0 0.15 meter. The pre-coefficient of friction is 0.3, that is mu. The preload in spring is adjusted in such a way that the spring force at the beginning of engagement is 700. It is given spring force at the beginning of engagement. But, but we already know spring force for all engaged position will be same. So if it is the spring force at the beginning of engagement, means at just engaged position. So can I say same will be the expression of spring force at all engaged position. So here can I say spring force at all engaged position that is Fs is nothing but is equal to 700 Newton. And it will be equal to centrifugal force at just engaged position that is it will be equal to fc1 that is mrg omega but that is different thing now actual running speed is given in rpm so i am denoting actual running speed in radian per second as omega so i will denote actual running speed in rpm as capital n which is 1500 rpm and we can convert this into radian per second if you will convert this in radian per second it will be 2 pi n by 60 means 2 pi into 1500 divided by 60 and in radian per second it will come 2 pi 1500 divided by 60 it is coming 157.079 radian now what examiner is asking first the speed at which engagement begins means uh, suppose i am denoting speed at which engagement begins as omega 1 so we have to calculate omega 1 but omega 1 will come in radian per second examiner is asking in the rpm so first we will calculate omega 1 then we, we can convert that into rpm how to calculate omega 1 here is spring force of all engaged position is given or we know already know spring force of all engaged position will be equal to centrifugal force at just engaged position and formula to calculate centrifugal force at just engaged position is m rg omega 1 square so if you equate spring force of all engaged position by centrifugal force at just engaged position from this equation we can calculate omega 1 that is speed at which engagement starts. So, calculate speed at which just engagement will start. And I am denoting that speed as omega 1. Omega 1 is speed at which engagement starts. Engagement just actually speed is less than omega 1 no engagement uh, greater than omega 1 missing engagement so how we can calculate omega 1 spring force of all engaged position will be equal to centrifugal force of just engaged position that is fc1 and formula to calculate fc1 is nothing but m rg omega 1 square now spring force is given huge si unit so i am putting spring force in newton it will be equal to m m mass of h2 which is 2 kg rg radius of center of gravity which is 0 0.12 meter into omega 1 square from this equation we can calculate value of omega 1 that is speed at which engagement will just start and it is coming 700 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.12 then square root it is coming you can check calculation Mega 1 is coming 54 radian per second. We will convert this into RPM. Mega 1 is RPM, it will be 2 pi n1 by omega 1 is equal to 2 pi n1 by 60, where n1 is speed in RPM. So, from this equation, you can calculate n1, that is speed at which engagement will just start in RPM.
will come after calculation it is coming you can check calculation 515.66 rpm yes sir so it is the speed at which engagement will just start now second and is, is engagement is starting at speed 515.66 rpm now second question is asking power transmitted by the clutch at running speed and actual running speed is this now you can see easily at this speed clutch will be in engaged position why because this speed is more than n1 or the speed at which engagement is starting and since it is more than the speed at which engagement is starting means at this speed clutch will be in engaged position and torque transmit will transmit from input to output we have to calculate that torque because to calculate power transmitted first we need to calculate torque so now actual running speed is omega 1500 rpm in radian per second it is omega which we have already converted and it is 157.079 and you can easily see this speed is more than omega 1 is at this position torque will transmit how much torque for that we need to calculate uh, first actual centrifugal force at this position and formula to calculate actual centrifugal force at this position that is fc is m rg into actual speed square which is omega so m we know rg we know omega we know so we can calculate actual centrifugal force at this position m is 2 kg rg is 0 0.12 meter and omega is 157.079 okay. so from this equation we will get the value of fc that is centrifugal force at this position which is coming 2 into 0 0.12 157.079 is coming 5921.7915 newton through this value of fc you can also conclude that it uh, at this position is engaged position why this f if this position is engaged position definitely this fc will come more than spring force and spring force of all engaged position is 700 newton and since this fc is coming more than spring force means this position is engaged position now what is spring force spring force of all engaged position will be same and which is already given in the question 700 newton so what will be the expression of net pressure force you want to calculate net pressure force expression of net pressure force will be fc minus fs if you want to calculate its exact value you can calculate but ultimately our objective is to calculate torque expression of torque is nothing but net pressure force on the friction lining is fc minus fs so friction force will be mu into mu torque will be into rd total torque transmitted will be into z so here we already know fc we know fs rd is given z is given coefficient of friction is given we can calculate torque transmitted by this clutch it is coming mu coefficient of friction is 0 0.3 into fc is 5921.715 minus fs is 700 into rd is inner radius of drum which is nothing but 0 0.15 meter a simple calculation and number of c is given in the question it is 4 so through this equation we can calculate torque transmitted by the clutch and how much this it is coming 591.715 minus 700 and 3 right? you can check calculation it is coming 939.909 now since we have calculated torque transmitted you can also calculate power transmitted by the clutch and power will be equal to power will be equal to actual speed which is omega into torque omega is nothing but 157.079 radian per second into torque transmitted by the clutch is 939.90 so through this equation we can calculate power and how much power transmitting capacity power is transmitted of the clutch at this speed it is mega into torque coming 147639.92 watt if you will convert this power transmitted in kilowatt in kilowatt it will come 
147.639 kilo so it is the value of power transmitted by the clutch at this speed it is coming 147.639 147.639 kilo so it is one of the numerical of centrifugal okay. this is one theoretical question from centrifugal clutch what this question is saying the effect of increasing the stiffness of a spring of centrifugal clutch it will decrease the engagement speed increase the engagement speed the in the increase of frictional force at maximum speed or none of the above this examiner is saying if we will increase the stiffness of spring what will happen with the uh, engagement speed engagement speed is omega 1 so what will happen if you will increase the stiffness of spring the spring force of all engaged position will increase now we already know the spring force of all engaged position is equal to centrifugal force at just engaged position and formula to calculate centrifugal force at just engaged position is m r g omega 1 square so if increase and spring force is increasing so definitely omega 1 will also increase mean can i say by increasing the stiffness of spring engagement speed speed that is omega 1 will also increase so it will increase the engagement speed is correct option for this question is option okay so we have also completed the centrifugal clutch so now here we have completed this topic this most important topic with respect to gate point of view that is clutch okay and what we have discussed in clutch first we have discussed what is clutch that is introduction of clutch then we have discussed various types of clutch and we have discussed two type of clutch that is jaw clutch and friction clutch then we have discussed uh, discussed the comparison of jaw clutch and friction clutch and ultimately for this uh, gate point of view friction clutch is more important and in friction clutch we have to study plate clutch uh, in plate clutch we have to study single plate clutch and multi plate clutch then cone clutch and centrifugal clutch so we have discussed plate clutch uh, completely we have discussed cone clutch and we have discussed centrifugal clutch means this clutch topic is completed okay in this one lecture only means through this one lecture only you can complete entire class similarly in first lecture i discussed completely break in next lecture we will meet with some other topic of this one sort in this one sort series okay now this is team drona of mechanical engineering here uh, he is uh, devendra negi sir who will generally teach basic thermodynamics to all of you he is swadesh sir he will teach production he is we know sir generally he will teach uh, applied thermodynamics to you he is aditya pal sir again he will deal production and industrial with you ratan sir for aptitude ramana sir it's me vishal sir for mathematics vinay sir for mathematics uh, fluid mechanics and thermodynamics uh, kuldeep sir uh, kuldeep sir will share general uh, important points to you means whatever update is coming in gate examination which psu is recruiting through gate uh, what is the status of irms these general things will be shared discussed by kuldeep sir to all of you uh, he is approved sir he will deal strength of material engineering mechanics to you uh, amit dikshit sir he will deal industrial engineering avishuji sir theory of machine and sandeep sir heat transfer okay so it is complete entire team drona of mechanical engineering okay so now i am taking rest because we have completed one short series of clutch topic in next topic in next lecture of one short series we will meet with some other topic of machine design subject okay and thank you